and of the first um, CG United Super 50 match being played here between the Leeward Islands and uh, the, the, the Guyana women's team. And uh, it's bright and sunny, but first of all, let us just, just uh, take in the toss with um, Visham Lalman. Are we ready for action here at St. Paul's in St. Kitts in match day number one of the CG United Women Super 50 Cup? Are we ready for the toss? Uh, with me is Ms. Amanda Edwards, the skipper of the Leeward Islands, and uh, Shamit Campbell, the skipper of the Guyana team as well, and also match referee Telma Gumps. Um, uh, I guess Amanda has the point. from the center is that the Leeward Islands women oh. team has won the toss and they've elected the ball first. Well, thank you very much there. Uh, the toss, of course, as said, won by the Leeward Islands and they opted to insert the guy in the team. Of course, looking at the track all year round, there seemed to be a bit of moisture still there in the track. Saw some dark areas, and perhaps the Leeward Islands team thinking that there would be something on offer uh, for uh, their opening bowlers. Uh, but we do have the teams, we do ha have all the necessary information. And uh, just to tell listeners, though, that this is one of three matches, the, the, this is the start of the CG United Super 50 Cup being played in St. Kitts. The, and this, of course, is one of three matches which are being played today. Uh, Leeward Islands here in St. Paul's coming up against Guyana. And then we also have Barbados coming up against Jamaica at Warner Park. And uh, Trinidad and Tobago um, coming up against the Windward Islands at Connery. And uh, I, I say good morning to uh, my good friend Visham, who will be with me in commentaries today. Well, good morning, Earl. And good morning to everyone looking on. Uh, I think it's a, a great day for cricket here at St. Paul's in St. Kitts. And, uh, you know, a great day as well for West Indies cricket to see women's cricket on show, regional cricket on show here, the CG United Women's Super 50 Cup, of course, the T20 Blaze as well coming up after this tournament. Um, so, yeah, it's a big, a big tournament ahead, a big day for West Indies cricket. And, you know, I think I'm... I'm excited for these two tournaments that's coming up here, Earl. I'm sure you are as well, and everyone who's looking on. Oh, yes. Uh, certainly, the tournament was held here in St. Kitts uh, last year, and we certainly enjoyed that tournament. Barbados, of course, winning the uh, Super 50. And, uh, of course, Barbados this year would be without a key player in uh, Mahaley Matthews, who is at the WPL. But... Um, the teams are out leeward starting, and uh, just to give you a quick rundown of the Leeward Islands team, it's Amanda Edwards, captain, Jazara Claxton, vice captain, Tonya Martin, uh, Therese Parker, Rosa Leibold, uh, shall we say, Sh Sean Nisha Hector, uh, uh, Shibani Baska. Uh, Renee Boyce, uh, Divya Saxena, uh, Sanella Willett was the captain last year, 
there's also Melissa Clark, and uh, that's the Leeward Islands team. But uh, for Guyana, as Guyana prepared to take for a strike, uh, the two batters out there for Guyana. It's uh, Shemaine Campbell, captain. Uh, Sherry Ann Fraser, vice captain. Uh, Shabika Gajnabi. Nomi Bakoy. Uh, Kezia Schultz. Nia Latchman. Ashmini Munista, Shanita Grimond, uh, Rihanna uh, Grimond, uh, one of the two Grimond Grim sisters. There's Mandy Mango and Plifana Millington. That's the uh, Ghana team, of course. And they are out there in the middle uh, waiting. In fact, play is being called. And uh, the umpires in this match, uh, they are. Maria Abbott and the Carolyn Brown. And uh, Carolyn Brown, in fact, is at the far end. She's residing as the Leeward Islands prepare to bowl the first delivery of this match. And uh, uh, this is being bowled by uh, Jazara Claxton, who is, of course, the vice captain of this uh, Leeward Islands team. And. Uh, she makes her way now. This one is wide, in fact, signal wide. Uh, delivery wide of the off stump. And a uh, signal there by umpire Carolyn Brown. So not a good start for uh, Claxton. Yeah, certainly not a good start there from Jazara Claxton. Uh, but it's going to be a bit difficult here Earl, with the wind that we have around St. Paul's. Uh, it's going to be a bit difficult for the seamers early on to settle and to adjust to that. St. Paul's, of course, always windy, short, and uh, this one is tugged uh, straight back. Not really in control of the shot, and uh, uh, going back uh, towards the bowler, picked up there at mid on, no run. So, uh, first legal delivery being bowled there by Zara Claxton. But St. Paul's is always windy, it's, uh, the, the field is, is fairly close to the, the sea. Very picturesque here at uh, St. Paul's. Yeah, definitely the sea, you can see it. Just around the entire fencing here at St. Paul's. What a beautiful sight it is. So this one is turned into the onside uh, uh, by Garazvi. And she gets off the mark. In fact, she's back for a second run as the ball uh, goes all the way down to square leg. And uh, two... Uh, to guy in opening their county at uh, the St. Paul's uh, Recreation Ground. So, uh, two runs there, in fact, it's uh, three for no loss. The first delivery being a wide. Yes, yeah, that was a good looking shot there from Gajanabi, who we know has been around the West Indies setup for quite a while as well. Paxton once more. Overpitched, but. Uh, bottom part of the bat uh, being uh, taken there by that one. There's not, there's been not really time in it. But we'll be playing it into the boot. I'm very happy though to see Earl, you know, some of the Westernies under 19 women's players actually moving forward and getting the opportunity at the regional level, at the senior level for their respective nations. Uh, Jazara Claxton, just, you know, one of those fruits that has come up as a result from that West Indies on the 19th setup as well. Yes, and uh, she has been elevated to vice captain of the Leeward Islands team this year. And uh, she, in fact, opening the bowling. West Indies on the 19 player, still an under 19 player. Uh, just to remind listeners, uh, the Leewards won the toss. He inserted the guy in his team. Uh, Claxton once more. This is a better delivery. This is on target, on center and off, and defended there by Kajnabi. No run, so three uh, for no loss. Nice uh, sunny conditions here at uh, the St. Paul's Recreation Ground. The only drawback is that there's a very strong wind and uh, it's blowing a 
across the field blowing. In fact, uh, if, if you look at the uh, banana trees in the distance, <laughs> it's, blowing from, it's blowing from west to east. So essentially blowing from right to left, turned into the onside for runs. They're back for the second run, gets it easily as it's uh, picked up down there at backward square and the two more to the score. So uh, the Ghana team completing the first over and uh, score five uh, for no loss. Yeah, a good first over there by Claxton, barring those uh, wide deliveries. And she was a bit too straight, you have to say, on the line of that middle and leg stump. It made uh, Gajna be access those deliveries easy and access the onside even easier. Uh, so she'd want to check that coming into the next over. But as we said earlier, you know, that breeze is a bit difficult to cope with if you're not familiar with the conditions. And many of the women on the Leeward Islands team and the Ghana team obviously wouldn't be familiar with the conditions here at St. Paul's. So just a, a case of them adjusting. And I think how long they take to adjust to the conditions would be a major factor here. Yes, and, and uh, of course, uh, if we just uh, put our mind back to last year, uh, when these two teams met at Warner Park, yes, uh, you can see the ocean in the background and the, the leaves really billowing in the, the breeze. one is outside the off stump a bit short and um, sort of a dab shot there uh, attempted and threw to the keeper yeah, that delivery not getting up as much there as uh, Mangru would have you know anticipated and died as it went through to the wicked keeper so the wind <laughs> blows away the <laughs> Uh, hat of umpire Abbott and uh, uh, we, we, we certainly would would be in for a lot of that today a lot of that's been blown away it's rather blustery here at the St. Paul's facility and uh, it's uh, Hector Sean Nisha Hector who bowls uh, delivery outside the off stump and to, to the keeper that delivery just came back in a bit uh, there from Hector. And uh, you have to say it's a good leave from, from Mandy Mangro in the end. Well, uh, she would tell you that um, it was a good leave. She deliberately <laughs> left it. Um, she would have picked up the line well. And a lovely true to Boyce, who is making a debut for the Leeward Islands. Uh, last year, Boyce would have played with uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Shot outside the off stump, uh, attempted cut shot. Uh, rather late on the shot that time, Mango. Uh, yeah. Through it go, goes to Boyce. Yeah, you can see Mandy Mango waiting on those deliveries from Shonisha Hector. And the ball not going through as quickly as I said earlier. But, uh, uh, Visham, mm -hmm. this, this could be a very interesting match here today. Uh, I'll get back to that in a while. Uh, defended this time by uh, Mango. Better delivery there uh, by Hector on our stump. Uh, defended well. But last year when these two met at Warner Park, uh, the guy in the team, they, they won just by one run. Was, uh, the Leeward Islands fell short by just some one run, um, chasing 167. And uh, they, they failed to to get over the line. Leewards, in fact, ended up uh, in the seller position last year. And uh, they certainly would have been in with, in with a chance of beating Guyana last year. So this could be a good contest. Played upishly up to cover by Mangro. Which we led no run. So Leewards starting fairly well. I would say we are in over number two. And uh, it's just uh, some five runs. Hector once more. Mango is edging. It eludes uh, the slip feeler. In fact, she 
would have gotten a hand to it and the ball ricocheted into the gully region uh, where it was picked up and the over comes to an end so uh, Lee Woods not conceding too many runs at this point and uh, you could easily see a fairly good start as we look at those banana leaves once more being buffeted by the wind really <laughs> blowing in that strong breeze and everything seems to be affected by the wind here at St. Paul's. Some coconut trees to the left of where we are positioned, just to the edge of the ocean. You're seeing the, the tent as well that the groundsmen are in. Well, uh, <laughs> let me just uh, correct you on that. We're not quite at the edge. It, it's a bit deceptive. There's a sort of dr uh, drop below the, the field here. It's still, still a bit of distance to cover to get to the ocean, but it's relatively close. Yep. And as we look to the far left, we could see um, there's, th there's also Stacia, uh, which is a nearby island. But Claxton to uh, Gajna B, she plays it into the cover. And of course, uh, uh, this year, of course, the, the prizes for Super 50, they, 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 they're very encouraging. Uh, the first place team would get US $20,000. Second place team would get US $10,000. But Claxton once more. This is a bad delivery, poorly lined, outside leg stump, and uh, uh, missed there by Gazna B. Uh, they are knocked down there by boys and uh, the white signals, one more to the score. Yeah, Claxon just needs to be a bit more careful here with her line. Length is not that bad, you have to see. But uh, the line, she's earning that line a bit too straight. Starting the deliveries a bit too straight is Claxton. Yes, Bisham, so the, the, the prize money really looking healthy this year. Edge down there, missed there by... Uh, boys, the ball races down to the third man boundary and it brings up the first boundary of the day but it was a good delivery on about half stump and uh, peeling off the outer portion of uh, Gajner Bay's bat and uh, the keeper in fact it went between the keeper and uh, the, the first slip and ran down to the boundary for four yeah, that's a good delivery from Claxton. That's where she wants to be. Just on about that middle and off stump. Just outside the off stump as well. And, uh, you know, Gajnabi had that one to hand. That's a big, that would have been a big blow for the Guyanese team. Yes, and uh, Claxton once more. This one is overpitched and uh, driven up to cover. In fact, up to extra cover with uh, fielded and... Uh, uh, there's no run. This is much better, these last two deliveries from Jazara Claxton. She's looking to get the ball up, and with the ball swinging as well with the wind, you want to pitch the ball up, but at the same time, you want to account for that swing as well. Of course, the, the, the swing, she probably should get, it would be some inward movement. This is a badly line delivery once more wide. And, uh, in fact, it eludes the keeper and goes down to short fine leg, and... Uh, a run is taken, so two runs uh, to the guy in his total. Two yeah. wides, in fact. Yeah, so runs coming a bit easily here at the start of the innings. Uh, in the Leeward Islands team, Amanda Edwards, the skipper of the Leeward Islands team, she'd want to get her bowlers to correct that a bit, not leak runs early on. Use that new ball well and to great effect. Remember, it's a CG United Women's Super 50 Cup. And uh, Claxton will continue from the far end. Of course, I was saying earlier on, there's uh, lots of money at stake. Uh, taking on the pad, the finger goes up. And uh, she's on her way. Yeah, she is. That, that looked plumb in front. We'll have to have a look at it again. Here it is. Certainly looked as though it was going on to hit middle and leg stump there, Earl. 
umpire thinks so and she raises a finger yes yeah, so, but uh, i certainly would like to have a look at that again it seemed as though there was some inward movement uh might have been uh yes probably hitting center leg yeah definitely uh, certainly ducked into uh, uh the battle and she was struck on the pad and uh, of course that's uh, a mango was out leg before yes uh, that's a good wicket to, to get there for the leeward islands team and very early as well and it's good to see the youngster Jazara claxton getting it in the right area there Earl, and striking so Guyana lose their first wicket and one of the the things uh the the things that came out of the tournament last year was the fact that the teams uh were not batting for any lengthy period we had teams batting uh, for 21 and 19 overs the sort of stuff and uh batting points uh, are available in this tournament uh so the, the, the West Indies Cricket uh, Association, of course, they're, they're trying to encourage our teams to bat longer. And uh, if you score 200 runs or more, you get one uh, batting point, uh, which, which would be, well, 220 or more, two batting points. And uh, it will translate into uh, 4.4 4 runs for over. But we'll get back to, to, to that batting point later on. So the extra points for team to be had here. This one is a good delivery. An off stump and uh, pushed into the onside. And there's no run. Yeah, so what's happening, Earl, is that there are two batting points available. There are two bowling points available as well. If the batting team scores 200 runs or more, that's one bowling, one batting point, sorry, and uh, 220 or more, then they'll get that additional batting point and they'll earn two points. And note that if the team batting second, they will still get the batting points dependent on their run rate, even if the team batting first doesn't score 200 or more. Yeah, so, so uh, incentives there for the teams, for both teams. So uh, if you take, for example, if a team is bowled out cheaply and uh, a team could get these runs at a good clip, uh, they could, they could uh, uh, get some batting points. But we've had another over completed. It's 12 for 1. We've had three overs completed. And uh, Bakoy is the new batter Nomi Bakoy. Uh, she has faced two deliveries. She's at the score. Gajnabi is on eight from nine deliveries. But it's a 50 over fear. And uh, lots of time left in this game. Yeah, certainly. I think it's even Stevens after the first three overs. You have to say a wicket to the Leeward Islands. A much welcome wicket as well. After leaking some runs a little early. And uh, the Guyanese, they would consider themselves a bit unlucky as well. Losing the first wicket. So, uh, Naomi Barkoy and Shabika Gajnabi. Hector, outside the off stump, and she's uh, really sticking about at that one. Outside the off stump, uh, a really iffy looking shot from Barkoy. In fact, Gajnabi. And through it went to Boyce, the keeper. But not a good looking shot that time. to once more for short run now this is better from the bowler on target but and also better from the batter uh, just pushing it back up the track to the bowler yeah well Hector was a bit too short I'm not sure if you agree with me in the first over of hers and you can see now that she's looking to get the ball up and she's understood what's needed at the start so she continues she has a slip third man Outside the off stump, and Gajnabi is playing up and missing once more. Uh, through it goes to uh, Boyce, and <laughs> uh, the hat blows away. And uh, it's been retrieved, but 
it's rather windy over here at St. Paul's, and uh, this is the norm. This, this is an area which is rather windy. It gets quite a bit of rain also. So it's a good delivery um, on a good length. And moving back to uh, the right-handed Gazna B, and she played it well, but certainly a bit of inward movement there from Hector. Yes, certainly we were seeing that at the start of the innings immediately from both bowlers actually. This one is played down to long leg for a single by Gajna B. And she goes to nine with that single. So Shonisha Hector, of course, um, Antiguan cricketer, uh, who would have played for, who actually, you know, played for the Trinbago Knight Riders in the women's CPL and she would have also played one women's ODI for the West Indies team and so she's just settling into international cricket as well so she'd want to do well here in the regional circuit of course there are opportunities for uh, many of these women good performances could uh, get themselves easily onto the West Indies team but the over comes to an end four overs completed and uh, we have 13 for one. Uh, the Guyanese women's team being inserted by the Leeward Islands as they, uh, the Leeward Islands had won the toss and opt into field. Uh, looking at the track earlier on, uh, uh, there seems to be a bit of moisture in the, the track. It was a bit dark colored. The find, of course, being a, a bit drier than the, uh, the end closer to us. And uh, perhaps the Leeward Islands felt that there was something in it for uh, the opening bowlers. And they inserted the guy in his team. But Claxton will continue from the far end. Taking on the pad, uh, an appeal. Perhaps going down leg side. Delivery right up in the block hole. Yes, yeah, certainly heading down the leg side there. A uh, loud appeal from Claxton, but not interested was the umpire, and I think rightfully so. You know, many times a person's looking on at the game tend to come down on the umpire, but again, they're in the best position to make the decision. Certainly, certainly <laughs> they're, they're in the best position. And uh, oh, this is, could be a no ball. In fact, signal right away, it was over pitched. And put away there by Gajna before four, down backward of square for four. Uh, but it was above wayside and uh, signal immediately by umpire, uh, umpire Brown, Carolyn Brown at the far end. And it, 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 it would in fact be a free hit. Yeah, so maximum value there for Shabika Gajna. Well, actually, it's not maximum. I'm sure you struck a six. It would have been maximum value. But still getting the boundary out of that no ball. And she has an opportunity now to cash in with the free hit that's been offered up. So it's uh, 17 for one. Claxton. Short. <laughs> that's a good bouncer. In fact, it goes past the keeper and goes down to a very straight fine leg boundary and uh, it's four runs as Willett retrieves but four runs nevertheless but it looked as though she got an, an edge onto that one and it ran away for four just past the keeper you can see hands on head on the wicked keeper's head there and tell you what it looked as though the well, umpire is signaling free it again. Well, actually, it looked as though it didn't touch anything there, Earl, and it was signal wide, was it? Yes, it, it seemed to have been signal wide by the umpire, and it was uh, over free there. coming up, but uh, some aggression shown there by Claxton. Let's look at it again. Just over the, the head of Gajnabi, and I think, you know, that's the reason why wide was signal. Well, the operative were there just over the head, but the umpire <laughs> is in the best position. And Claxton would have to try once more. This one is up to the bat. And uh, Gazna B must have forgotten that it was a free hit. <laughs> um, she just came forward, defended up to backward point. And uh, 
Uh, no run, no scored. Shabika so. Gajanabi, the 23 year old Guyanese cricketer. So she is very early days in her career. But uh, it's a big opportunity for her. Yeah, so I'm missing the tr a trick there just now, but she settles. Gets a good delivery, defense. Claxton picks up. Uh, 22, it is for one. Familiar with Guyana, Earl? No, I've never been to Guyana. I'm not familiar. I uh, think it's a good place to go. I've never been there as well. I've been to St. Kitts, though, and I can tell you it's a <laughs> wonderful place. Welcome to St. Kitts. <laughs> and I hope you go over to, to Nevis. Yeah, maybe before we leave. Driven up to Midon by Gaznobi, Claxton, right up in the block hole. And uh, no one is scored. And so, uh, Shabika Gajnabi, she was born in Quarantine, Burbis, Guyana. And all of 23 years old. Played, of course, you know, the women's T20 international cricket for West Indies. ODI cricket as well. So one is pushed up to mid-off. And uh, the, I, the over quietly comes to an end. And it's 20 to 4 1. Yeah, good little spell of bowling here from Claxton and Hector. But that has just been dented by that over there. Two no balls. Well, actually, one no ball. And then the wide that, you know, allowed the free hit to remain. So 21 conceded in three overs for Claxton. I don't think that looks good for her, Earl, but what I can tell you, that wicket was mightily important. Yes, it was. And, uh, of course, as you rightly said, uh, uh, bowling those no balls, one above waist, which was dispatched to the boundary by Gajna before four, and then uh, the bouncer, uh, which eluded the keeper and ran away down to fine leg. It, it went for four also, so that was signal that was also signal wide so five runs there so uh, a bit expensive outside the off stump uh hector and uh they live up in the black hole uh, probably uh, driving length but uh the batter defending yeah, it was a, a pretty good line pretty good length there from hector and you would expect someone like a shanisha hector to be on the money Coy is playing at and missing. And three goes to uh, the keeper, Boyce. No run. Of course, the Leeward Islands, the group of islands situated where the northeastern Caribbean Sea meets the western Atlantic Ocean. Huh? Yes, uh, certainly. Beautiful yes. places. And of course, the, the, the islands that, that make up the, um, the constituency for, the, for Leeward Islands cricket, of course, would be saying it's Nevis, Antigua, Mount Swat, Anguilla, St. Martin. And of course, the US, the US and the British Virgin Islands, they are also included. And these are the islands that form part of the uh, Leeward Islands Cricket Association, short lifting and uh, no shot offered. In fact, uh, a no ball signal there by the umpire, umpire Abbott. In fact, a free hit. Players are uh, wondering what's the reason for that no ball. Was it the front foot? Well, infringement. I don't think it looked as though it was anything to do with the actual delivery but uh, I think it could very well be the front foot of Shanisha Hector but it's a free hit and it's outside the off stump and no shot off for there uh, by Barkow yeah Barkow surprisingly allowing that one to go into the, the keeper's gloves uh, all in all it was a free hit as well so well, it's the second time we've seen uh, the, the batters not really going after the free hit. Over pitch and uh, she's out. 
bowled all over the place. It was a full pitch delivery and she played all around it, missed it completely, and uh, she was bowled. Well, that's what can happen when you don't take a single or you don't capitalize on a, your free hits. And immediately you saw the next delivery from Hector right up into the block hole. As we look at it again, I don't think there was anything much that Barakoy could have done with that. What a lovely delivery it was. But again, it was a straight delivery that she, she completely missed. Yeah, I think she should have gotten back onto that one. It was right up, yes, but she seemed to have missed it. There seemed to have been a slight bit of inward movement. Be uh, because if we look at it again, Earl, you know, there's a case of that delivery on if it would have connected with the bat. If she made contact with the ball, actually, it would have been a full toss. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. But she, she, she missed it completely. And I think it was just a case, simple case of the, the batter missing one completely and being bowled all over the place. So uh, Lee Woods uh, picking up their second wicket and uh, getting just reward for inserting the guy in his team uh, in, in this morning after winning the toss. So uh, a, a good start here for the Leewards as the captain and uh, uh, Shemaine Campbell comes to the crease and she of course, highly reputable player, has played for uh, the West Indies of course. And Hector of course picking up her first wicket, she now has uh, one for one. She's in fact <laughs> in a third over and uh, has picked up one for one. That's a good delivery. Good start there by Hector to the new batter, uh, Shemaine Campbell. And Campbell played it well too, defended well. Uh, and Hector feel it to, his own, to, her own, to her own bowling. So uh, the over comes to an end. And uh, it's now 22 uh, for two. And guess what, Earl? That one run that came off of Shanisha Hector's bowling was off an extra. So no runs off the bat just yet from, Sh of, from Shanisha Hector. So a very good start. And it seems as though she, she is leaving the field. And uh, the substitute, uh, McCoy, goes on to the field. So, but she ran off, so she seems to be pretty okay. <laughs> yes, she actually definitely. ran off the field, so... Uh, maybe just a quick change of something. So Gajnabi has seen two wickets falling around her already. The opener, of course, Mandy Mungru uh, going to uh, Jahara Claxton. And, uh, you know, Shonisha Hector picking up the second wicket of Naomi Barkoy. And that would have left Gajnabi there. Now she's joined by Shamin Campbell. Shamin Altia Campbell. Wicket keeper, batter for the West Indies team and has been a, a good servant of West Indies women's cricket. Earl. Yes, uh, she has been around for quite some time. And as you rightly said, uh, you know, as a wicket keeper, very versatile player also. Uh, keeps wicket nowadays for the West Indies, but uh, capable of doing some bowling also. Uh, some leg spin, I think. And uh, we, we are having a bowling change at the far end. Uh, it's Tanya Martin who is picking up the attack from the far end. And she's replacing Claxton, who has been a bit expensive, but uh, certainly would have picked up a very important uh, wicket from that end. And uh, that, of course, is, is very critical. Uh, yeah. yeah, 21 runs coming off uh, Jazara Claxton's three overs thus far. Yes, yeah, she was able to pick up the wicket of Mandy Mungru, which uh, was vital. But I think she's done a job at the start here for the Leeward Island. So it's a case now of just switching things up a bit. And gives Tonya Martin the opportunity. The wicket keeper coming up to the stumps as well. Yes, in fact, she would have sent for the helmet. And of course, you know, the rules are once you're up to the stumps uh, as a keeper, you would have to wear that helmet. This one is driven up to middle for a quick single. The return goes to the keeper's end, but uh, the batter safely home. Campbell safely home. And uh, trusting a partner, uh, 
Gajna B. Gajna B drove up to Midoff. Midoff is a bit deep. Uh, looks like the Zara Claxton at uh, Midoff. Um, she's a bit deep, and uh, the ball was traveling fairly slowly. It was always going to be Gajna B's call as well. Martin once more. This one is turned nicely into the onside by Campbell. And this is good batting. Um, just coming forward and just working it into the onside. Uh, playing it, taking the pace from that one and getting an easy single. But this is what you're going to get different. There's going to be a difference in the batting now uh, from Shumi and Campbell. You're going to see that difference. She spent a lot of time playing international cricket and we're going to see who are looking to convert those deliveries that you might see other batters just knocking around. And she's going to look to pick up the singles. Short outside the off stump, edge down uh, to uh, third man, where Parker Fields, there is Parker Fields, and uh, just a single. Parker coming from off the third man boundary. Yeah, so that one, a bit fortuitous there, that single. But again, it's a single nonetheless. It was way in the gap, way past that slip fielder. No chance at all. Martin, overpitched, um, in fact, uh, outside the leg stump. And uh, I missed the, in fact, they're back for the second run as the return goes to the keeper's end, but they're safely home. And uh, initially, I thought the umpire was going to signal wide. But in fact, there's no signal, so that must have come from bat. Yes, yeah, some miscommunication there as well from the fielder. There was a slip fielder running towards the ball, and there was also the fine leg fielder was very wide. And a bit of lazy effort there getting to the ball would have allowed them to get through for that single. That extra. Martin over pitches outside the off stump. In fact, it's going down towards the boundary. In fact, it <laughs> helped over the boundary line there uh, uh, by Parker, and it's four runs. In fact, four whites. Uh, so that's five runs to the guy in his total. A bit sloppy there uh, by the Leeward Islands. It was a wide delivery, wide of off stump. And uh, eluding uh, uh, the keeper and eluding uh, the first slip uh, in uh, Bashka and running down to the boundary for four. Yeah, another good piece of work there by the wicket keeper. It was always going to be tough for the slip fielder. Being shadowed there by the wicket keeper as well, and there was a left boot stuck out by the fine leg fielder coming around. In fact, she seemed to have helped it. Oh, there's a loud appeal! All the Leeward Island players are up, and uh, the hands of Carolyn Brown goes out to signal wide. Well, I'm not too sure what that would have touched there, Earl. We'll have to have a look at that again. Well, certainly the Leeward Islands players, they felt that something. It looked as though the ball would have touched something on the way through to the wicket keeper. Yes, it devi deviated quite a bit. Martin once more. Up in the black hole, the appeal goes up once more. Beaten. Uh, Campbell outside the off stump and through to the keeper. Yeah, lovely delivery. Just pitching and moving just a tad bit away from the back of Campbell. We're just fending at that one. And that's the sort of line, that's the sort of length that you, that you want to, to build your home on. Of course, the Leeward Islands would like to get the wicket of Campbell as early as possible. She's a key batter in the guy in his lineup. This is a good delivery on target. Campbell is defending. Back to the bowler. And uh, no run. Yeah, so that's an excellent over completed there by uh, Tonya Martin at the end of seven. It's 33 for the loss of two. Mandy Mangru, the first batter to go, of course, of the bowling of Jazara Claxton, leg before. And Naomi Barkoy bowled comprehensively of the bowling of Shanisha Hector. Who is back on the field now? She left uh, during uh, that over by Martin. She's back, but she's been replaced there 
uh, from the uh, pavilion end. And she's been replaced uh, by uh, Melissa Clark, uh, another seam bowling option here for the Leeward Islands. So Melissa Clark, who hails from Nevis, will pick up the attack. She would be bowling right arm over. And uh, just the, the one slip, there's a third man back on the boundary. Backward point, cover, extra cover, mid off. And uh, in fact, extra cover is being just a bit of an exchange. Uh, personal that is. Uh, so she goes to number three, Roselle Leibert goes to mid on. Uh, there's a mid wicket and a fine leg right back on the boundary. So Clark starts well on target and pushed in to the onside by Gaznaby. No run. Yeah, that's a, a good delivery. Uh, maybe a bit too straight, but uh, first delivery of a spell. Clark. Outside the off stump, white signal. The, the Leeward Island bowlers, uh, they seem to be having some issues with their control uh, this morning. Uh, Vishal. Yeah, and uh, again, Vish that's, a, that's a case, you know, and a debate, just maybe it's because of the, the breeze, the immense breeze that we have here, again. So it's, it's all in all, it's for them now, the bowlers, not just of the Leeward Islands, Earl, but of the Ghani team when they come into bowl as well. You know, it's a case of them looking to negate that and, you know, put the ball in the right areas and in saying so, allow it to do its thing. As we speak, we see some adjustment to the field. In fact, the slip has been taken out and uh, placed into a short backward square position. This one is outside the Austin and dab down to third man for single as Martin comes from off the boundary. And it's one more to uh, Gajna B. And uh, with that single, she moves to 20. So this is a good start by Gajnabi. Yeah, Gajnabi looks really good. She was able to put away the, the bad deliveries. Of course, that no ball from uh, Jazara Claxton that she absolutely put away to the boundary. Clark overpitched and driven up to a cover. Saxena is quickly across to her right and feels no run. Really lovely day here. The, as we look out towards the ocean, it looks rather inviting. Clark once more. Outside the off stump and uh, a white signal there by umpire Abbott. Umpire's having some stretching to do very early this morning, Earl. Well, we'll uh, get them in good shape, um, get the, the, the muscles flexing, keep them alert. Keep them in the game. Clark once more. This time it's on target and uh, Campbell is defending. I think we should make a deal in the commentary box as well. Every time there's a wide, we should signal wide as well. So yeah. we'll be stretching and keeping ourselves in the game as well. Well, certainly, certainly. <laughs> that's, not a bad, that's not a bad idea at all. It's a very nice place, St. Paul's. Clark once more. Uh, this one is defended by Campbell back to the bowler. Lots of time left in this game. Lots of time to bat. We are just uh, in over number eight. Uh, one delivery left in this over. Of course, St. Paul's is an area in sync. It's which is very rich in history. That's Clark once more. And this one is... A swing and a miss. That one seemed to have uh, uh, moved a bit away from the 
right-handed batsman pitching on stumps and steaming away. Yes, it certainly did. A slow delivery too. Pitched on about centre and off and seemed towards off. Uh, not a bad delivery. Uh, Campbell looking to sweep and missing completely. <laughs> yeah, that's a top delivery you have to see from Clark. And uh, I think all of the, the bowlers, the, the, the seamers, would need to look at what Clark just did. Just get it on about that middle stump. And with the wind taking the ball away from the right hander uh, from the far end, that'll be very vital. It looks as though Martin is going to continue from uh, that far end. Yes, so Tony Martin. And uh, I was saying earlier on, the St. Paul's is rich in history. Uh, of course, the first national hero for St. Kitts Nevis, Robert L. Bratcher, he heals from St. Paul's. Of course, at one point being the, the premier of St. Kitts Nevis. And he's from St. Paul's and just to our right, just about uh, 100 meters down the road, there is uh, a national park, a monument erected in the air and is out. So there we had it, a ball just on about uh, the center and leg stump of Gajna B. And she was looking to turn it into the onside and uh, the ball taking probably a leading edge and going into the onside to be caught at uh, square leg and uh, she's on her way. Yeah, as easy as you like there. Couldn't have been a simpler catch than that all morning, Earl. Uh, and just throwing away her hand there, Shabika Gajnabi. It was, it was down the leg side and playing very lazily, looking to turn that one onto the onside rather than bludgeon it and not playing positively on that occasion and it accounted for her demise. Yes, uh, you, 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 you so correctly put it. I'm just looking to turn it. Not, no feet movement at all. Um, she remained flat-footed and just looked to turn it into the onside. So she was never over, over the, the delivery. Um, she was never in a position to control the shot. And the, the ball just ballooning into the air uh, for easy catch to be taken there at uh, forward of square. And I think the catcher was Jazari Claxton. Yeah, it seemed that that was Jazari Claxton. So she was involved in two of the wickets all morning. Yes, yeah, so she, <laughs> she certainly has been played a significant part so far, but uh, the Ghana team losing the set uh, batter. Um, she certainly got a, a, a good start. She was into the 20s, on 20 as a matter of fact, and not being able to go on from there. So I was telling you the, the first national hero of St. Kitts Nevis, mm -hmm. Robert Llewellyn Bratcher, is from St. Paul's and there's just there's a park just about 100 meters to our right, just down the road, within walking distance as Martin once more. This is a nice shot, uh, played up towards the mid wicket boundary, well timed there, they should get at least two, and uh, it's uh, uh, Grimond. Really, Anna Grimman, who gets off the mark immediately with those two runs. A good shot. Yeah, so immediately you can see that positive intent there from Grimman, looking to get the runs. Despite already three wickets falling for the Guyana team, so they have now been pushed on the back foot very early, they will. Yes, and uh, pro probably uh, as the B could have played a similar shot to the previous delivery, just easing into the shot and looking to play it into the onside. <laughs> oh my oh. goodness. <laughs> and this one was played up to mid wicket. And uh, it's Claxton who seemed to have got tangled in her own feet there, with her own feet there. Oh. <laughs> uh, two feet locking together and uh, uh, tumbling to the ground. Very unfortunate then. And we look at those little things and we can smile about it, but sometimes those can cause real damage there. Martin once more. Grimman plays it nicely up to cover. And uh, I like the look of Grimman. He seems to have a lot of time to play a shot. Rather easing that one up to cover. Yeah, definitely. You can see from the time she's gotten to the crease, she's looking to get runs. 
And that's good to see. I think that the coach of the Guyana team would be happy. I think this is a very vital partnership for the Guyana team. Martin, over pitch, driven up to Saxena at cover. She feels well. And uh, there's the run. Saxena, of course, uh, hails from um, Canada. And I would have spoken to her during the uh, the 40 games um, I saw there at Warner Park and she you know she was looking forward very much to this tournament Martin once more this time it stayed down to world's third man for a single as it's picked up there uh, by Hector in fact uh, that's not Hector that's Clark Melissa Clark who will uh, pick up the ball in from this end so the squad at the moment, 39 for the loss of three after nine. And Shabika Gajnabi, the last wicket to fall of the bowling of uh, Tonya Martin, caught by Jazara Claxton at a forward square leg. And uh, the other two wickets to fall, Mandy Mangru started things off this morning for the Ghanese team, and uh, that followed by Naomi Barkoy. So, three, one wicket apiece for the three seamers, Tonya Martin, Jazara Claxton, and also Shanisha Hector. So, Clark will continue. And uh, outside the off stump. Women is on three. Sherman Campbell, she's on three also. 39 for three. And now we see Clark making some adjustment to a field. She's asking a mid on to come inside the circle. Over pitched and driven uh, up to long on. And uh, just a single as Hector is quickly across to her left uh, to field and uh, uh, just the one run there uh, to Grimond. Uh, so captain comes back in strike. Clark once more. And this one is wide, very wide of the off stump. And this has been one of the shortcomings of the Leeward Island bowlers this morning. They have been guilty of uh, bowling uh, too wide too often and conceding runs. Overpitched, in fact, it's driven back to the bowler who got a hand to it. It was in the air. And... Uh, in fact, it came from hand onto the stumps, but no damage done in the end. So, umpire Abbott uh, making some adjustments to the stumps. Carolyn Brown, of course, she is at square leg. Clark once more. This one, uh, just uh, uh, nipping a bit into the, the, the right-handed Campbell, who played it well in the end. The delivery which came back from off, and she played it quite well up to uh, extra cover where Claxton fielded, and there was no run. Oh, this is a good delivery, starting just... Uh, outside the off stump and moving slightly away but well played there by Campbell too picking up the line well and allowing it through uh, to Boyce Boyce of course uh, coming into this Leeward Islands team last day played for Trinidad and Tobago certainly was strengthened the batting over pitched and driven but straight to Claxton at extra cover she feels no run So 
the end of that particular over. Nice uh, outfield here at St. Paul's. Well kept, well groomed. And uh, certainly good conditions in which to play cricket here. Apart from the, the strong breeze which is blowing across the field, as Martin continues down the onside once more, it eludes the keeper. It's going out towards the boundary. In fact, it goes, uh, it beats Willett into uh, the long leg or the fine leg boundary and goes for four. So, giving away a lot of runs uh, with extras here so far, the, the Leeward Islands. Willett, of course, the captain for the Leeward Islands last year. Now, uh, just a regular player in the setup. Edwards, of course, being named captain and Claxton vice captain outside the off stump. And towing it down to third man uh, for a single as Parker comes from off the third man boundary. Sun is out really, it's uh, bright and sunny. But of course, with such a cooling breeze blowing across the field, it, the conditions out there would be rather pleasant uh, for the Leeward Island, uh, the Leeward Island players. Martin once more. This time it's driven up to extra cover by Campbell, and uh, she can't score as she finds uh, the captain Edwards in the way. And so he's, she's kept in check. Uh, but Martin, Tonya Martin, from the far end. This one is on the pads, driven up to uh, mid-wicket, Claxton Fields, no run. So the shots are coming by Campbell, but she's not been able to beat the field. and. Thus, not picking up any runs. Martin once more. Over pitched and driven. In fact, not time. Coming from the uh, bottom portion of the baton, going up to mid on. And uh, once more, she can't score. So, a bit of a struggle here for, for Campbell to find the gap. She's driving edges. And goes down to third man Parker. He's feeling the return. Goes in and uh, two runs take there by Campbell. Goes to the left of Parker who had some running to do. And uh, it allowed uh, the, the batters enough time uh, to pick up two. So Campbell has moved on to five. And Grimman is also on five. It's a good delivery on about off stump moving into the right handed Campbell. She's defending. It goes back up the track to uh, Martin, who feels to her own bowling, and uh, the over comes to an end. And uh, it's uh, now uh, 50, in fact. Uh, 49, the scoreboard is showing 50. And your scores is saying 49 for 3. But we'll get that sorted out in a while. As Clark will continue. Interesting feel, of course, just the long on and long off in runs in boundary saving position. In fact, it's driven down to Willett who feels and there's no run. It's 
Yes, short third man, backward point, cover, short extra cover. Mid off, deep, long on, short mid wicket, backward square. Short fine, driven nicely uh, by Campbell for single. It goes up to mid on. And uh, Sector who did the feeling. Island players rather vocal out there. They, they, they've had success. They have picked up some three wickets. It's now 54, 51 for three, in fact. Uh, played up to long on Hector Fields. A single, easy single there uh, to uh, Campbell. 52 for three. Guy, of course, looking to stage a bit of a recovery here after losing some early wickets. Turned into the onside for a quick single. This could have been close had the captain Edwards picked up and sent the return to the keeper's end. But in the end, the batters were safely home. Safety through for a run. And one more to the score. So it's now uh, 50 Three for three. And made over number twelve. Clark. Over pitches driven nicely back past the bowler and uh, uh, knocked down there by Hector. And uh, two runs. In fact, just a single taken there. So, these two batters, uh, though for Guyana, they're, they're settling in nicely. Um, Campbell, the captain, is on seven. And uh, Riala, Riala Liana Grimon, she is on uh, eight. Onto the back foot, uh, initial movement by Campbell forward and back, and uh, pushing it into the offside. The over comes to an end. We, the first hour of play comes to an end. 53 for 3.
Well, we're back here after a well-deserved water break. Yeah, the St. Paul's cricket ground, of course. And uh, with the kind of team after being inserted, there are some 54 runs for three wickets, and we, we've had uh, 12 overs in the first hour. Uh, fairly slow going, I should think, 12 overs. First hour, of course, we had the Seamers bowling, but are fairly short runs. Yeah, so a good start from both teams. Yeah, not so much of a, a, a good start from Claxton with the ball. It was a bit inconsistent, having a bit of problem with the breeze, but still picking up that first wicket of Mandy Mongrew. So it looks as though we are going to see the first sign of spin this morning, Earl. Yes, uh, certainly, and this should speed up things a bit in terms of the overweight. Uh, but nevertheless, the first sign of spin. And, uh, this one is turned into the onside. And uh, looks like Parker uh, is, has picked up the attack from the, the far end. And she seems to be bowling right arm off spin. Miss Campbell comes in to strike now. Gets an over pitch delivery. In fact, a wide signal uh, passes the batter outside the leg stump. And uh, certainly she seemed, seemed to have missed out there. And, uh, on an opportunity to um, get some runs. Turned into the onside for a single. Now. Trying to sort out the, the bowler there as he from the far end comes in now, bowls outside the off stump, shortish, and punched into the, the offside. So it looks like Bashka. Looks to be Liebud. Liebud, yes, Liebud. Yeah, that's. The, yeah, that's lie, but Rosa Lieber, that action there is um, Rosa Lieber. She, um, she has a rather unique action. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, but she seemed to have gained a bit of weight from the last time I saw. <laughs> last day she looked a lot slimmer, but it's in, in fact Rosa Lieber. Jimming a bit, Rosa Lieber. That one getting some turn there from her. A rather round arm action. She's staying a bit side on as well. Look at that action now. She's staying very side on. This one flicked away nicely by Campbell. Good fielding. And scampering through for three. That's excellent running there. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Very good running indeed. And taking one on the arm. The ball traveling all the way out to deep mid wickets just a couple of meters away from the boundary and it was a long throw in and the the batter seized the opportunity to to pick up the extra run so good running indeed by the two uh, battles here for Guyana. Gajna B went for 20 from 26 deliveries and uh, Campbell is on nine as is a partner Grimman who is also on nine so to look into stage a bit of a recovery here for the guy and his team. Uh, just to remind listeners that uh, Lee Woods won the toss, inserted uh, the guy and the team. And of course, this is the CG uh, Super 50 being played here at the St. Paul's Recreation Ground. There are two other matches in progress at the moment here in St. Kitts, uh, Barbados. Uh, versus Jamaica at Warner Park and uh, Trinidad and Tobago taking on the Windward Islands at Connery 
and we'll try and get an update on those matches uh, in a while. But the action continues here at the St. Paul's Recreation Ground. In fact, uh, Bashka now comes into the attack. She uh, picks up the attack from the media center end, and uh, uh, she's going over the, you know, looks like a bit of a leg spin, and uh, punched into the offside. Uh, they're thinking of a second, decides against it, and just a single there uh, to Campbell. So that single would take her into double figures. She's on 10. So yes, Bashka tosses up, driven in the air, bouncing up to uh, Lawn, uh, which he led by Melissa Clark. And uh, one more to the score. So, oh, in fact, this one is tossed up, and it took some time to get to the batter. It was given some loop uh, by Bashka, and uh, gently pushed into the onside there by, by Campbell. No run. Bashka once more. Good support being shown as well by the fielders. This is a good shot. Swept away down towards the uh, backward square boundary. The ball slows up inside the boundary and uh, they have taken two. Yeah, just a bit heavy on that side, but you know, we must give credit to uh, the groundsmen here, or the ground staff, I should say, at St. Paul's Earl. What a magnificent outfield we are seeing here on the show. And it's all in all, it just adds to the great day of cricket we're having here. Oh, yes, and uh, certainly we, we would have been having um, some shows over the last couple of weeks. Punched it up to cover uh, by Campbell. She's back for the second run as Martin sends a rather weak return to the keeper's end. In fact, um, it was backed up in the onside. And uh, two more runs there. So Ed was the captain doing the backing up that time. One's coming a lot easier now uh, for Guyana. Oh, this one is tossed in the end bold. My goodness. What a delivery. It was given a lot of loop. And uh, Campbell's eyes must have lit up, thinking that here was an opportunity uh, uh, to pick up a boundary. Missed it completely. And she was bowled all over the place. My goodness. <laughs> what a delivery. Lots of loop. A straight delivery there. Immediately, <laughs> the bowler looking back to the umpire. And all in all, what a brilliant wicket this is for the uh, uh, Leeward Islands. That's the inform. And the ever so experienced Shamin Campbell, the skipper of Guyana as well, has to go. Perhaps the, the, the best batter being dismissed. My goodness. That one took ages, and probably it was the slowness of the delivery that defeated Campbell. Yeah, she certainly had to wait an eternity for that delivery to get to her. And the ball seemed to have dipped also. It was very high in the air. It looped. It was given a lot of loop, and it seemed to have dipped on her and bowled her all over the place, and Campbell is on her way. Yeah, definitely a big strike there by Shabani Baska. And uh, Grimond is now being joined by... We'll have to wait and see who the new batter is. Looks like Fraser. Looks to be Fraser. Yes, it is Fraser. Sherry and Fraser. Shelly and Fraser. Shelly and Fraser, yes. Experienced as well. Oh, yes. Uh, West Indies uh, experience, of course, would have played with the... Uh, West Indies senior team. Uh, last year she was here for the tournament, but um, she would have missed most of the matches. I think she uh, would have been recovering from a, an injury. Uh, but she is very much into the tournament, very much at the start of the tournament this year. And uh, uh, we'll have live but continuing from the far end. So it's now 64 for four Ghana and uh, the Leeward Islands the 
players, the, the fielders, they're very buoyant at this stage. Uh, they have picked up wickets. I think the Leeward Islands team can't afford to settle here. They need to continue to pile on the pressure. Here's one push back up the track to uh, the bowler. What Guyana needs here at this point is uh, these two batters to settle. Grimman has been there for some time, but uh, they need a, a partnership here. They do. And I think rotation of the strike would be critical. They, they should be looking to uh, pick up singles, rotate the strike more, and keep the scoreboard ticking. And if the bad deliveries come, they, they put them away. And uh, now I'm seeing something that I do not like in cricket. Uh, a new batter to the crease. And uh, team in a very good position. And immediately they're sending someone on the mid-wicket boundary. There's a long on. And this is not something I, I, I subscribe to. Uh, in fact, there's, there's a cover. I, I always think that you should make it difficult for the new batter to get off the mark. Certainly won't subscribe to not putting a fielder at slip. I want to put some pressure on the new batter. What I would subscribe to, though, is the Windy's Cricket YouTube channel. That is what I have subscribed <laughs> to. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but definitely, you know, you want to put pressure on the batter very early, especially with the first ball being faced. You don't want to give up that easy single to take them off the strike. You want to have as much balls being bowled to them. Well, let's wait and see. Sher Shelly and Freeze, the, the left-handed batter, gets a delivery outside the off stump, does not play a shot. So there's a mid wicket right back on the boundary. There's a long on right back on the boundary, and there's a cover sweeping right back on the boundary. And Fraser is yet to get off the mark. She's back, and they're taking on the pad. The appeal goes up. 64 for 4 it is, and we're in over number 14. And I don't think that uh, Fraser would be thinking in terms of going for big shots. At this moment, she's in at number six. Uh, she's the vice captain of this guy on the team, and she'll be looking to uh, settle in and build a partnership. Well, I might have gotten <laughs> it wrong. She's swinging, swinging into the onside. It goes down to backward square. She picks up two. So, uh, two runs to, to Fraser. Yeah, well, it was too short and too wide down the leg side as well. Pitching outside leg stump. So anything, if she misses that, she can't be given leg before. So taking the opportunity to pull it away on the onside. As the 14 to overcome stern end. Actually, the 15 to overcome stern end. So Grimmon will, will, will take strike and... <laughs> This is a very interesting bowler, uh, Basker. Uh, does not push it through, gives it a lot of ear, and flights it a lot. And uh, certainly uh, picking up the prize scalp of uh, the captain of the guy in his team, uh, Campbell. This is a good delivery, tosses up, the, the, the batter rather tentative there. And they're rather teasing uh, the batters. Yeah, it's always difficult playing those spinners who are tossing the deliveries up. But this time she's put away and put away for four. It was over tossed, and Grimman swung it to a straightish mid wicket position. It swung it between deep mid wicket and long on, and uh, it went to the boundary for four. So a good shot there by Grimman. Excellent shot, looking to use her feet and using her feet at the right time as well. Because, of course, you know, being a coach myself at the youth level, we always tell the batters the right time to use your feet is when you know you have perfect a perfect eyesight of where when the ball is delivered. And uh, that's what Grimman did there, and she was able to earn herself a boundary. Driving once more. This time it goes up to Saxena, who comes from off the 
uh, long on boundary to field and uh, the single easily taken. Would it would be interesting to see how Fraser, Shelley and Fraser handles uh, Basca. Yeah, definitely. As I was saying, it's difficult playing those deliveries that's tossed up over your eye line. And uh, Sherry and Fraser looks in an attacking mood since coming to the crease. Off spinner to a left hander, always a treat of a contest. You know. yeah, she's by nature, of course, an attacking player, Shelly Ann Fraser. And uh, you can either see runs or uh, wickets here. Sherry. Basca is, a, is an uh, in interesting proposition. This one is <laughs> tossed up outside the off stump. The stumps are broken the by the wicket keeper. Uh, boys. And, uh, Shelly and his freezer is having a look for us. Basca. Tosses up in the air, hit over. Extra cover down towards the boundary of a four. A lovely looking shot there from Fraser. As we say, she's in an attacking player by Nitya. And that was a full toss again there by Bashkan, well put away. Here's another look at that shot. I don't think she would have timed it as she would have liked, but she got the elevation. Um, she hit it over a short extra cover into the gap. And uh, uh, it ran down to the extra cover bounds for four. So a, a good shot in the end there by Fraser. This one is quicker and spins into uh, Shelly and Fraser and she plays it down to Willett who comes from off the wideish long and boundary and uh, Fraser picks up a single. So this brings the over to an end. And uh, we no doubt we'll see life, but continuing from the far end. Score at the moment, 78 for the loss of four. So it's live from the far end. Right arm off swing. This one is flatter, quicker delivery. And pushed into the offside. The Bashka fields and uh, there's no run. Level once more. Swung into the air out towards mid wicket. The catch, is, oh my goodness, it's flown there by Saxena. She got to it. Um, she did all the hard work, got to it, and floored it. So bad miss, bad miss there by Saxena. Shelly Ann Fraser, of course, could be a, a dangerous batter. Uh, she settles once more. Back, playing that and missing outside the off stump. Uh, through to boys. So Saxena putting down what was an easy catch. Um, she got to it, settled on it, and then floated. it. Offensively played by uh, Fraser up to Basca this time. No run. Basca is at short extra cover. This one is punched up to cover. Claxton feels well. She's moving rather smartly to her left and feeling well. And uh, no chance of a run. Cover, long off, long on mid wicket, all on the boundary. Played over, extra cover down towards uh, the boundary for a single. Martin moves smartly to her left. Uh, to feel and just to run there to uh, Shelly and Fraser and with that single uh, uh, she retains the strike 
as it's the end of the over. Bashka will continue, and uh, she's bowling to Sally Ann Fraser. Tosses up, and uh, uh, Fraser is defending. Bashka once more. This time is outside the off stump and uh, the outer portion of the bat uh, taken and going down to short third man. And uh, it's a single uh, to the batter there, Fraser. So it's now 61 uh, for five. Grimman is back on strike. She's on 16. Fraser is on 11. Short and punched uh, to Widish mid off. Willet quickly across to left fields. No run. Bashka once more. Like right arm, leg like spin, tosses up. And uh, hit down to Saxena, who takes it on the bounce. It was in the air for some time. And uh, she came in from off the boundary and uh, took it on the bounce, knocked it down, in fact. And uh, just a single there to Grimond. Lee Woods would have to be careful here. The runs are coming. Yes, five wickets are down. Tossed up and defended there by Shelly and Fraser. It goes up to short extra cover. And uh, that is no run. Captain, of course, uh, uh, Feeling Edwards. Is she swinging into the onside up to square leg? Uh, Martin is around quickly, picks up, sends a return to the keeper on the bounce. And just a single there to uh, Shelly and Fraser. Of course, we. This is the first day, uh, first round of the CG United uh, 50 over Super 50 over competition. Tournament, of course, the name of the tournament is CG United Women's Super 50 Cup. West Indies uh, tournament, the, the T20 Blaze comes later on. But it's. It was a lie, but it continues from the far end. In this YouTube channel, of course, being the mainstream in facility. In the end, well caught. Oh, that's a good catch. It was played uh, there to square leg by uh, Shelly and Fraser. And the catch, gleefully and well taken there uh, by uh, uh, Parker. Straight to her, but she took it well. It was traveling quickly too, and uh, six wickets down now for Guyana. It's 
So leewards continue to pick up wickets here. And uh, the new batter, of course, would be the other Grimman sister. Uh, this time it's uh, Shanita Grimman who goes to the, the, the crease. And uh, she goes out there to partner her sister. Liana Grimond, who's been batting well, and uh, she is uh, in fact on 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 17 runs. Rihanna, Liana, and uh, Liable, of course, picking up her first wicket. So, Guyana being inserted and. Uh, uh, struggling at this point. So Shanita Grimman faces her first delivery and she receives from Rosita Leibold and she is turning this one down to a short backward square. It's fielded there by Claxton, there's no run. Was a Leibold from the far end. Nice and sunny here at uh, St. Paul's. As Anita Grimman faces, she's back and pushes up to long on for an easy single and gets off the mark rather easily. And certainly the Leeward Island uh, feelers, they're, they're certainly missing a trick. A new batter, yet to get off the mark. And there's a long on, long off, there's a cover sweeping, there's a deep mid wicket. And this time it's pushed up to extra cover. Uh, it's fielded by the captain Edwards, and uh, there's no run. So, probably a question of um, experience here by the Leeward Island captain. This time it's tossed up and beats uh, Grimman, Shanita Grimman outside the off, some it goes to the keeper. So we would have, continuing from the uh, pavilion end, Bashka. Bashka making some slight adjustment to a field. And uh, she would be bowling to Reliana uh, Grimond. Tosses up, and this one is played in the air down to Willett. It comes from off the boundary at long on, wide is long on, and an easy single to uh, Grimon. Shanita comes into strike. Shanita Grimon. Tosses up and driven. Oh, back to the bowler. In fact, not timing it. And uh, it goes back to the bowler. So Bashka once more. Back goes uh, Shanita Grimond, hesitation, but in the end, the single easily taken as it eludes Claxton and goes uh, into the cover region. And uh, one more to the score. So. Ashka once more, right arm, leg spin, bowls, a, f a bit flatter this time, and pushed into the offside, and uh, there we see 
Zara Claxton showing you know, of her football skills. She's, of course, a footballer also, all around that lead. Tosses up and driven in the air over uh, Claxton, a short extra cover. Willett moves around to a left field, sends a return uh, to the keeper. Not a very strong throwing arm, so uh, the second one easily taken there by the batters. Um, the Grimond sisters, and two more to the score. So it's now 67 for, for six, for five, as a matter of fact. Driven and driven up to mid on, Saxena Fields, and uh, one more to the score. So the over comes to an end. And uh, no doubt we'll see it was a lie, but continuing from the far end on a bright sunny day here at St. Paul's. Weather looks fine. And uh, hopefully it should continue this way throughout perfect conditions in which to uh, play cricket we seem to have died down just slightly as Lybord was a shorter flatter delivery pushed back up to her she feels no, bo no run There's a loud appeal here from one. In fact, the finger goes up. She was pushing forward and they're beaten. Uh, taking on the pardon umpire, uh, Brown, Carolyn Brown, thought that one would have struck stumps. And uh, Grimon is on her way. And that's, of course, uh, is. Young agreement. So seven weeks now no for Hello. Hello. So Shanita Grimman goes back uh, to the pavilion being dismissed like before. And uh, now we see the new battle going out there. That is, of course, um, Kezia Schultz. Kezia Schultz uh, going out now to partner Liliana Grimman, who has been there for some time. And uh, she, in fact, is on some 18 runs. So Leibold picking up a second wicket. And uh, she certainly has bowled quite well. Libel once more comes in now, bowls to Schultz, and Schultz is looking to turn one around the corner. It goes from Pat down to uh, Willett, who is at short, uh, fine leg. She feels, and there's no run. Now we see some plastic being blown across the pitch. Of course, we have been telling you all day, it's been a very windy day here at St. Paul's. St. Paul's normally. Um, a windy area of St. Kitts. So Roselle Leibold once more comes in now, bowls. And uh, Schultz is pushing into the offside. Of course, picking up a bit and blowing away some of our documents here. The, the, this one is pushed back up the track uh, to Leibard. And uh, no one scored. So.
short and uh, looking to punch into the offside. It goes up to cover uh, where it's fielded by uh, Saxena. And there's no run, so the over comes to an end. And it's a guy now losing some seven wickets, a guy now being inserted and being asked to bat first by the uh, Leeward Islands. And it's going for uh, 88 uh, for six. So 88 for six is the, the actual score. And uh, we've been having a, a bit of an issue here with our graphics. And uh, there, of course, uh, the statisticians are trying to iron that one out, and uh, hopefully we'll get that sorted out momentarily. But here is one push down to Saxena, who comes in from long on, and a single there uh, to Grimond. So Schultz comes in to strike. Nine now it is for uh, six the Ghana team looking to post something that would give them some a good chance edging this one down towards third man for uh, in fact uh, Schultz is looking for a second run but it's not on and just a single there to Schultz so she gets off the mark with that single and it's now ninety. 90 for 6. Tosses up and edges down towards the third man boundary. The outfield is rather sluggish. In fact, uh, Grimman is down looking for a second run, but uh, Schultz was not interested in a second run. And Grimman not too happy with that one. Of course, uh, just to remind the viewers that this is a 50 over fear. And there's lots of time left in which to bat. And uh, we are into over number 22. So lots of overs left in this inning so far. And uh, more than half the side is down already for Guyana. Bashka. This one is a bit flatter, punched. In fact, goes past the diving figure of Jazara Claxton at short extra cover and goes out to Willett, uh, who is on the long off boundary and the single easily taken in the end. So one more to Schultz. Schultz sounding very much um, German. But of course, playing for Guyana. Grimond is defending, pushes up to Short extra cover, Claxton Fields. Vasco once more. Stand so goes straight to Claxton who fields and uh, once more there's no run. So uh, over number 22 comes to an end. And another 28 overs left for the Ghana team to bat. Libel will continue uh, from the far end. And so far she has picked up two wickets. for Schultz. Uh, a slip is in place. Uh, there's a backward point. Cover. Extra cover. Long off. Long on. Short mid wicket. Short backward square. Uh, Schultz defend. There's also a deep mid wicket. Martin. Right on the boundary. And uh, it's liable once more. Shortish. And uh, Played up to extra cover. The captain Edwards fumbles a bit, but uh, no possibility of a run. Uh, 
Cybert once more. Right arm off spin. Short, flat. Uh, played up to mid off. Edwards moves from a position at extra cover to retrieve. There's no run. Schultz is stretching forward this time and plays it back up the track to the bowler. Leibold who feels to her own bowling. Once more, there's no run. 92 it is uh, for six. Guyana. Offensive shot once more by Schultz. And uh, certainly the Leeward Island bowlers, they're keeping things well in check. They're not conceding too many runs. Defended there by Schultz. Claxton. A usual lively step is quickly around to the left. Of course, the exuberance of youth uh, feels well. And there's no run. So another over comes to an end. So Bashka once more. Uh, balls to Grimman. Grimman is pushing it up to a Claxton at extra cover. She feels. Bashka once more. <coughs> one is a bit flatter from Bashka and it's punched up to long on brings uh, Willett from off the boundary to feel and uh, a single easily taken so woman moves to 21 and he's a drive by uh, Schultz in fact it goes on the succeed and goes down to the boundary uh, for four. So a bad miss there. She seemed to have had it well covered and uh, it went under. She's limping away. Uh, but uh, sometimes that's just an excuse to uh, suggest that uh, she, she, she might have had uh, some issues, some problems, some injury. Um, trying to stop that one and that accounted for the fact that the ball went to the boundary, but I think that was just simply um, a bit of acting there by Saxena. She certainly missed it badly and it went away for four. Uh, four precious runs, of course. Tossed up by Basca and uh, uh, Schultz is defending. It goes back up the track to the bowler who feels to her own bowling. So we have seen Saxena miss a catcher early on and now miss feeling. Punched up to extra cover. Uh, knocked down there by Claxton. No chance of a run. Bashka once more. Tosses up. And uh, Schultz is defending. And uh, it goes up to Claxton at short extra cover. And the over comes to an end. So, uh, 21 to Grimond. Bashka is on four. It's 97 for six. Uh, the Guyana team batting first after being inserted uh, by the Leeward Islands. <clears throat> so we will see the spin of uh, a live but continuing from the far end. And, uh, of course, Schultz having some repairs done to her pads. Uh, she's ready. Grimman, uh, Rileana Grimman, who's on 21 settles. And he's defending ball, passing 
past the outside edge and going through to the keeper. Very close to the edge that time. You see there we saw women pushing forward and being beaten. Liven once more. This time it's driven up to Claxton at uh, short uh, mid wicket, short rather straight mid wicket. She feels no run. This time she's swinging up to mid wicket. Martin comes from off the boundary and uh, sends the return. One bounce to the keeper, Boyce, and a single taken there by uh, Grimond. And that will take a score on to 22. And uh, it's now 98. Uh, so approaching a landmark here, another landmark here, the Guyanese team. As Liebert will continue from the far in the right bowling right arm off spin. Shoes gets a delivery, takes it on the full, plays it to Claxton, who is that short mid wicket, no run. Liebert once more. This time she's looking to hike this one into the one side and uh, might have come from the bottom portion of the bat and going into the on side. Some excitement there from the bowler. Uh, probably thinking that one might have just snuck through a bit, but certainly it did not she did not get the desired results. Short, flatter, punched up to cover. Uh, well fielded there by Saxena, who has been very much in the play today. And uh, she limps uh, towards the position, so that's not a very good sign. Uh, probably carrying some slight injury. Saxena, of course, being one of the main battles for the Leeward Islands. And they would be hoping that she would be in good shape. So Bashka will continue. She is in the uh, middle of a very productive and long spell bowls, tosses up, driven straight back to Bashka, who uh, does not feel well to her own ball. In the ball, in fact, goes through her legs and goes down to Willett, who comes in from off the uh, long on the long off boundary. Uh, the single easily taken. So a few lapses in the field by the Leeward Islands team today. This one is outside the half stump and uh, punched up to Willett. Uh, was quite some work to do during the course of this match so far. In a position there at long off. But the single in the end easily taken. So the 100 has come up for Guyana, driven all, all along the ground. Uh, oh my goodness, this one goes straight through the legs of Willett. And goes down to the boundary for four. She was coming in, seemed to have had it all covered. And the ball just went through her legs and into the long off boundary for four. My goodness, the, the feeling of the Leeward Island certainly has uh, uh, lacked quite a bit today. We have seen some misfeels, a uh, couple of catches going down. But Basker will continue once more. Oh, and this time beats the uh, uh, Grimman outside the off stump. And two goes to the keeper. So Grimman in the meantime capitalizing on that misfield and picking up four. She has gone on to 27. Drives in the air out towards Saxena. And uh, <laughs> she's on the ground. She's down on the ground but feeling well in the end. Uh, Seems to have slipped a bit. And uh, just a single, but Saxena seems to be limping uh, a bit. Bashka once more. And uh, looking to tickle this one down to fine leg. The 
or ricocheting from Pat going into the leg gully area where it was tidied up by Boyce the keeper. So at the end of that particular over, uh, the end of over number 26, we have had 26 bold and uh, uh, the score 105 for 60. Ghana team batting first after being inserted uh, by the Leeward Islands. So Leibold will continue. She's bowling right arm off spin. This one is on the pad, played into the onside up towards mid-wicket. Martin comes from off the boundary. Can't get there for the catch. Uh, the return goes now to uh, the bowler. And uh, it's a single to the score. Taken on the full there by Schultz up to long on for a single. So guy looking to eke out a total here. They are 106 for six. They're looking to get something which they can work with. Lastly, of course, against the Leeward Islands, they got to 167, and the Leewards just falling short by one run. He was 166 uh, for nine in the end. Potched up to cover uh, for a single uh, by Grimond. This one is on the pad, looking to sweep this one around. Uh, single is taken as it goes into the short fine leg position. Uh, we'll wait and see if there's any, any signal from the umpire. In fact, there's no signal, so she would have gotten back onto that one. And it's one more to Schultz. time Grimman is defending. It goes back up on the onside. And Grimman who is on 30. Uh, top score so far for Guyana. Uh, So we have had some 27 overs completed in this inning so far. It's a 109 for six. And uh, it seems as though we are going to have a bowling change from this, the uh, uh, pavilion end. So it's Hector who comes back into the attack, goes in right arm, medium pace. Uh, this one is pushed up to Willett at mid off, she feels. And uh, there's no run. So Basker being given a rest. She's in fact down on the third man boundary right now. Hector once more, driven but uh, to point by Schultz, no run scored. See Claxton at extra cover loosening up, perhaps she might be in for ball in a short pe period. Punched up to cover as Martin is around there, quickly back for the second run. 
and uh, two more to the score, uh, two more to Schultz. Shortish punched up to cover uh, by Schultz. He gets another run. And uh, she moves to 12 with that single. It's now 110 for six, Guyana. This time she's driving powerfully up to mid on mid on fumbles allow in fact the, the, the batsmen were the batters were looking for a run in the end decided against it. But there was some fumbling. Had the uh, ball been uh, fielded cleanly uh, by Melissa Clark, there, there might have been a possibility of a run out. But Sector once more. This time, Claxton is tour light fields. No run. So, the over comes to an end, uh, and uh, it's time for a water break.
We'll be back here at uh, St. Paul's Recreation Ground. We are seeing a bowling change from the far end. Claxton comes back into the attack. And Claxton, who previously had three overs for uh, some 17 runs. And she picked up a, a, a wicket, of course. Bashka, I'm not too certain if these, these rolling figures are up to date, but we'll, we'll get that sorted out uh, in a moment. But nevertheless, it's Claxton from the far and who comes in now. And uh, bowls a good delivery. That one uh, back in a bit to uh, the right handed Schultz, who in the end, inside, edged it out to into the onside. And it was the keeper who had to come from behind to retrieve. and. Uh, single taken. So in fact, Claxton would have had some uh, three overs for 21 runs before and picked up the one wicket. Uh, she now has three overs for 22 runs, 3.1 overs. Claxton once more from the far end comes in now. Over pitch once more. It's another wide. And uh, she's been guilty of uh, over pitching down the onside and uh, uh, giving away those extras, bowling wide of the crease. Uh, uh, lack of control by Claxton uh, so far in this match. In over number 29, 104 it is for six. Outside the off stump, uh, played up to cover. Uh, it's fielded by Parker. There's no run. In fact, Parker is on the third man boundary. Terrace Parker, that is. Uh, this one is played back. In fact, it eludes. Claxton in a follow through and goes up to uh, mid on. Where it's fielded. So, Jazara Claxton once more, right arm. Driven, knocked down by the bowler. One, one, four, four, six. Guyana, he knocks the bat first. Claxton once more. Punched up to extra cover. And uh, she can't beat the field. And can't score. Played to the right of extra cover this time. It's fielded there. There's no run, so uh, that over comes to an end. It's uh, 116 for six, uh, Ghana. So we are seeing the captain for the first time, Amanda Edwards, and she's picking up the attack from the pavilion and short flat, played up to uh, Clark, who is at mid on, no run scored.
Edwards once more. Tosses up on the pads, turned around the corner. And uh, they will pick up at least a single. This one is hooked out towards mid wicket. It goes up to. Uh, that looks like uh, McCoy, who's on the field. Uh, emergency fields run. She feels well. And sends the return in. Schultz is pushing into the offside. Uh, perhaps getting a delivery which was a bit too close to her. She was looking to cut, and uh, in the end, she played it into the offside. Not timing it well, not in control of the shot. She's defending this time. And it goes back to Edwards, the captain for the Leeward Islands team, who feels to her own bowling. There's no run. Edwards once more. This time she's looking to cut once more, played on top of it, played all over it. In fact, kept a bit low and through it went to Boyce, the wicket keeper. So Claxton will continue. She is bowling from the far end of the ground. Bowls a delivery which Grimman attempts to drive. It comes from the inner and the bottom portion of the bat and goes into the onside, uh, which feel it there. By Bashka, there's no run. Everyone is looking to flick into the onside. Missed it completely. And uh, we'll wait on the umpire. No signals uh, are leg by umpire. Uh, Carolyn Brown and uh, waits for the signal from from the yeah, pavilion. She has to wait a very long time. She holds that pose quite well. <laughs> uh, must be a very fit lady to stand on one leg that long. And uh, seems to have gotten the signal from the scorers. So she's ready to go again. Claxton once more. Over pitch down the leg side once more. Another wide. And uh, certainly Claxton has not been able to get a line right this morning. She has been guilty of uh, being too leg side-ish. And in fact, giving away a number of extras bowling down the onside. Claxton once more, right arm over. Short and punched. In fact, uh, uh, misfielded there by Clark at backward point and allowing a single. So, guy in a fighting back, 1 1 6 for 6. They're looking to get a score with which they can uh, uh, fight with. Wide, uh, very wide. In fact, uh, that certainly looked pretty close to a no ball. And uh, we look at it again. 
was very wide delivered there by, by Claxton. And uh, as we look at it once more, in fact, lucky to have gotten away with the no ball. Uh, in fact, uh, that one was, was rather wide indeed. Might have come very close to being a no ball. Of course, once it it does not land on the the cut strip, it, it could be called a no ball. But it certainly seemed to have landed on the cut strip, and uh, that's the white signal. But a single pushed into the onside there uh, by sh by uh, Grimond, and it's now one twenty one for six uh, Guyana. So a little partnership building here between these two. Overpitched by uh, Claxton. Oh, there's a big mix-up. The return goes to the keepers, and it's not a good one. In fact, it might have come from the body of the, the guy in his battle, but certainly there, there's an appeal uh, for obstruction, but that seems to be quite legit to me. Uh, the, of course, there are rules in cricket which suggest obstructions. It seems to be. No, in fact, she, 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 she did, did not seem to have uh, changed direction, so uh, the single would stand. Opportunity going up again there for the Leeward Islands. Uh, a better return, they, they, they simply could have uh, just tried to get it back to the wicket keeper. Uh, and a good return could have seen the loss of a wicket there for Guyana. But in the end, uh, the Guyana batters prevailed. Ball, yes, he is. That's a very good delivery indeed. It won, it's one that nipped back. It pitched on about off stump. And in fact, uh, nipped back a, a bit and seemed to have struck between uh, center and off. And... Uh, uh, good delivery there by Claxton, picking up a second wicket. She was wayward in the over previously, but uh, coming back and bowling a good one and dismissing Schultz for a uh, handy 17 uh, for the Guyana team. So Guyana now 122 for 7. So Claxton now has... Uh, two for 29. And uh, not showing good control, but nevertheless, uh, uh, getting in a very good delivery there that time. The one that nipped back and one which knocked back uh, the off stump of uh, the batter, Schultz. So the Leewards getting uh, the, the breakthrough, what was proven to be a very bothersome partnership between uh, Grimman and Schultz. And it's now 122 for seven. It was the last, that was the last delivery of that particular over. Uh, so the captain Edwards would pick up the attack here from the, the, the pavilion end. She goes in the right arm off swing and bows one to uh, Grimman who's defending. Grimman in the meantime, she's on 32 and she's batted quite well. She's been there for some time. Shorter, flatter. Axton is around as the new batter is looking for a non existent single. New batter, of course, being uh, Munisa. This time, the single is easily taken as it's pushed up to long off by Grimon. 
and this brings Munisa into strike. Um, as Mini Munisa, right handed bats, batter. So Edwards to Munisa. Munisa is playing it nicely back upon the onside. Gets a single as the bowler misfeels uh, to her own bowling. And uh, she's backed up in the onside there uh, by Clark. And Munisa gets off the mark immediately. We went back in strike. Please uh, to Clarkston at. Short extra cover. No run. Tossed up. Given a bit more loop there by Edwards, but uh, Munisa is defending. She's not uh, tempted into a rush shot. And the over comes to an end. 124 for seven. Guyana batting first. This is interesting. Uh, Claxton just picked up a wicket. She has been taken out of the attack. And uh, now we see she's being replaced by uh, our good friend Hector from the find. I welcome back um, Visham Lalman. Well, thank you very much, Dale. <coughs> and good afternoon to everyone who's locked on to the stream. <coughs> coverage on Wendy's Cricket YouTube channel, wherever you may be logged on from. This one is edged down towards backward point. Uh, Sparker moves to a right to retrieve and uh, to move to the score. Uh, two runs there uh, to, to Munisa. I think we saw a good fight back in that last partnership for the Guyana team, unfortunately, the wicket falling and uh, Claxton, the bowler breaking the partnership. Outside the off stump, uh, naughty shot there by Munisa, beats her, goes to the keeper. As Interestingly though, as soon as Claxton picked up the, the wicket, she was removed from the attack. Yeah, just maybe trying something different there the captain edwards looking to get claxton in the wicked taker just to break that partnership hector outside the off stump and uh, an attempted cut there by munisa missed it completely so it goes to the keeper munisa would have uh, traveled to the united states with the west indies on a 19 team we have played the on the 19 West Indies team quite a lot, and she would have also been given the opportunity with the senior team as well. Drives nicely up to cover. Saxino is back on the field, feels well. And uh, it's good to see Ashmini Munisa in the Guyanese senior setup. And given the fact that she would have had international experience, not much just yet, you'd want to see her. From a Ghanese fan point, you'd want to see her actually come good here in this situation. Ghana really needing her efforts, and also Relana Grimond, who's also played a good hand. If she can bat through to the end of the innings, though, I think they could well and truly get up to maybe around 170, 1, 175. That would be a, a total that they would be happy with. They could fight with that. Driven nicely and uh, sets off for the single immediately. Uh, Monasa. But she has looked good. She, she has looked good so far. So the over comes to an end. Uh, uh, Hector being brought back into the attack. But guilty though of uh, not really attacking the stumps too much. Being guilty of bowling uh, too much outside the off stump in that, that particular over. Yes, yeah, certainly a bit too wide. Yes, we could have seen Munisa looking to chase those deliveries outside the off stump. 
But who knows? A different batter would have bludgeoned those deliveries through the offside, Earl. Yes, on, 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 on a different day, <laughs> perhaps. Munisa, and there's a loud appeal for out card behind, and she's on her way. Uh, there was Edwards uh, bowling one just outside the off stump, and uh, we saw <coughs> uh, Munisa earlier on flirting with deliveries outside the off stump uh, from uh, the bowler Hector, and now she got one just outside the off stump from the off spinner. Uh, flirted with it, it took the edge, and she was well caught there by the keeper, and she's on her way. Yeah, good sharp catch there by the wicket keeper. And just about when we are saying it's a good time for someone like Ashmini Munisa to stand up and stand up tall with the bat, she had to go. I think Earl with his trademark commentator's curse on that occasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it always works, huh? The commentator's curse. But there was a loud uh, appeal there by the Leeward Islands players. And uh, uh, one wicket has brought two. And it's now 127 for eight Guyana. And uh, that with the, the fall of that wicket, that 170 you were, were hoping for for Guyana uh, seems to recede a bit into the distance. Now we see long off being called into a, a, a mid off position short and uh, punched into the offside there by the new batter. Edwards once more. Tosses up this time and driven down to mid on for a single. And uh, <coughs> it's one more to the score. And it's good to see, you know, the Leeward Islands, after that partnership, really fighting back. I thought that they let up the pressure just a tad bit. And when five wickets were down, I thought at that point in time, they, would, they could have looked to put a bit more pressure and seal the deal. Giman is playing up to mid on and two for singles. <coughs> Clark uh, guilty of misfeeling that time uh, and uh, not really keeping the pressure on the, the batters. Yeah, some misfeeling along the way as well would have added to the meager effort from the Leeward Islands team. But you still have to give them credit. They're bowling here and there. It was good in patches, though. Yes, it was good in patches. We saw Claxton, for example, uh, bowling five bad deliveries and then getting in a very good one, which got a wicket. This one is a bad delivery, badly lined, uh, outside the leg stump and turned down towards long leg and uh, back for the second run. That's Latchman, the, the, the batter, who picks up two and uh, two more to the score. So... Score will move into the 130s. It's now 131 uh, for it. And 131 for the loss of eight. So Hector will continue from the far end. Of course, we have some other matches going on. Hector tries a slow one, driven back. Uh, in <laughs> fact, it seemed to have struck uh, the stumps at the far end. Yeah, but unfortunate there for the fielder as well. You know, sometimes you see the ball going in the direction. You wouldn't expect it to hit the stumps. Then it hits the stumps and it goes the other way. And you're just wrong-footed. And that's what Claxton was trying to tell the bowler and the captain as well, who, was, who looked a bit disappointed with the effort. Last time I checked, uh, Jamaica was 126 for four. Uh, of course, they are playing 
uh, the at Warner Park against Barbados. And TNT at Connery, TNT batting against the Windward Islands, they were 95 for four. But we'll get the updates for you as we able to. This one uh, from a thick bottom edge goes down uh, to Parker. That third man and uh, just a single take there. Yeah, so Shanisha Hector, what a spell of bowling she would have had in her first. And she's come back five overs, one for five. Simply outstanding. Saxena Fields up at cover is it's driven there uh, by Grimond. It's been a good knock by Grimman, though. She's on 35. Short. It's in the air. Catch is well taken. A good running catch there by the captain, Edwards. It was short. She was looking to uh, punch it over mid-off. Sort of uh, flat-batted shot. She, she succeeded in getting it into the air. As we look at it again, good running catch there by the captain, Edwards, leading by example, and the ninth wicket is down for, uh, for, for Guyana. Excellent catch there by Edwards, always difficult, and uh, that ball was going away from her, and with the wind as well, when the ball goes high into the air, it's always going to be tough. So Amanda Edwards again, setting the example, and top stuff from the skipper of the Leeward Islands team. That's nine wickets down. One more nail in the coffin to seal the deal here for the Leewards at the end of the first innings, if they can get that as quick as possible. Good knock there by, by Grimman. Uh, very good knock indeed. Uh, and uh, uh, she so far would have top scored for uh, Guyana. So Lee Woods, as you right, they said just one wicket away from closing out this innings here for Guyana. And they would have done well. Uh, they would have won the toss, they would have inserted Guyana. And they would have done well to, to, to dismiss Guyana for, well, not dismiss, I'm uh, um, preempting things a bit, uh, to have picked up some nine wickets uh, for a score of 133. Uh, but. Uh, you know, they would have to, once they dismiss Guyana, they would have to go out there and bat well because we have seen some uh, low scores in this tournament uh, last year. And uh, of course, we are hoping that the, 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 the batters uh, for, for, for the various teams, they, they, they bat longer and uh, post bigger, bigger totals. Yeah, and you know, the head coach of the West Indies women's team would have made that very clear, and he would have said that one of the areas of concern, the strike rates of the players, the averages of the players, and the ability to play on the offside, those are some of the things that he would have mentioned uh, that are concerned at the international level. And this is the level of cricket that you know, it's just, it's the penultimate level of cricket before the international stage. And you want to see them, the players, that is, you know, putting those things into practice at this level. I shouldn't say putting it into practice, but putting what would have been told to them and what they would have done in practice, you know, into practice out there uh, on a regional circuit. Seems as though the captain is leaving the field, she's limping. And we do hope that it's nothing too serious. But but you're right. Uh, you know, I mean, and this is why um, the West Indies, they would have introduced these, these bonus points and so on. Uh, if you look at women's cricket, it's um, on the international scene. It's evolving. And even teams like Bangladesh, Pakistan, the old cricket, the women's cricket is improving considerably. And I think we are lagging a bit. Uh, behind the West Indies. This one is turned into the onside uh, for a single. Uh, 
Uh, so certainly there, there, there is need for much improvement. Well, you can see the intent from, of course, Cricket West Indies to make this happen or to assist in that happening. And, you know, kudos to Cricket West Indies and, uh, you know, for, you know, their great efforts over the last couple of years and the great work that they are doing at the moment in men's and women's cricket. Uh, as I say, a special good morning, or actually good afternoon, to the president of the West Indies Cricket Board. That's Dr. Kishore Shalu, the vice president, Mr. Azim Basharat, and the director of cricket, Mr. Miles Bascom. Yes, good afternoon to you gentlemen also. Uh, this one keeping rather low. Um, from Edwards, I'm going through to the keeper. But it's Latchman, the non strike and the new batter at the fine, Millington. As Edwards goes in now, bowls, tosses up, and uh, uh, Millington uh, is defending. Uh, no run, so interesting that you mentioned afternoon. In fact, 12 35, this one is uh, swung down to uh, square leg. A good bit of footwork there by Terrence Parker. Running back, and stopping it with the boot. Of course, many of these women nowadays do play football, uh, so they do have some football skills. Zara Claxton, for example, is a national player. This one is short, in fact, wide, too wide of the off stump, and signaled there by umpire Abbott, umpire Maria Abbott. Of course, too, one of the innovation of this tournament is that. The officials are uh, all women in this tournament. Outside the off stump, um, she's driving at the stumps are broken. It is an appeal. Yeah, it's good to see, while we are speaking about the women's cricket, it's good to see the umpires and the women umpires being utilized in the regional format and cricket around the Caribbean. This time she's. Working it into the onside. Uh, McCoy, who is on, substituting. Uh, chases back, picks up. And a uh, single is taken there. Uh, Millington gets a single. And uh, he takes the score now to 137, 137 for nine. In fact, it was Latchman who picked up that single. Now Millington gets a single as she, she stays it down to third man and uh, brings Latchman back into strike. I don't think that the Leeward Islands team would want this innings to prolong for any long period of time here now. Well, we, we have seen teams last year, we have seen teams losing with uh, uh, some low scores, uh, being bowled out for some low scores last year, so the, the Leewards would have to be careful at this point. Of course, 138 uh, on the board. They are already on the board and they will have to go and bat well to make these runs. And here's another couple of runs being stayed down to uh, backward point. And uh, it's Clark who had some run into the two retrieve and uh, they were through for the run. So, 136 in fact. Uh, 139. This one is over pitched and drew back up the track to the bowler. What should be noted here though, Earl, is that Ghana is on the brink of not being able to gain that batting point that one batting point because of course if they get up to 200 that's the only way they're going to get one batting point edged and caught wide delivery outside the off stump she stands there latchman waits for the umpire to signal out uh carolyn brown that is and the innings has come to an end but it was a wide delivery wide of the off stump and the it was a very thick and loud edge 
And uh, for some reason, Latsman stood there uh, waiting for the umpire to give her out. But she certainly was on her way, and the innings has come to an end. Yeah, certainly an excellent, sharp catch there from the wicket keeper. That one flew off the outside edge and stuck out the right mitt and was able to pluck it out of the air at the end of this innings. What a wonderful bowling effort from the Leeward Islands women's team after electing to, to bowl first. Earl. Yes, uh, they, they certainly did a very good job, the, the bowlers, uh, after electing to bowl first. Uh, and uh, uh, bearing in mind, too, that there were a number of lapses in, in the field and they, 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 they actually gave away some runs, some extras, dropped a few catches, but in the end, they still were able to uh, restrict uh, the Ghana team for a score of 140. But they would have to go on bat and bat well. I would not essay to say that, uh, you know, uh, they are in a winning position as yet. Uh, Guyana, of course, uh, they, they do have some good bowlers, Munisa and company, uh, you know, and uh, Guyana would be looking to, you know, put up a good showing and perhaps de try to defend this total. Yeah, definitely so, Earl, and uh, as we say goodbye to everyone just for a short time and uh, just about half an hour's time we'll be back with more live action here from St. Paul's in St. Kitts. We'll be seeing the chase of the Leeward Islands women's team.
Well, good afternoon from uh, the St. Paul's uh, Cricket Ground, where we are going to see the second half of this match. The Guyana team, having been inserted by the Leeward Islands team earlier on, uh, scoring 140, uh, being all out uh, just before the lunch and interval, and we. <coughs> We are back with play here, uh, the Leeward Islands. They will start uh, their innings. Uh, Boyce, Janice Boyce is out there. New player for the Leeward Islands. And uh, alongside her is uh, uh, Melissa Clark. So the Leeward Islands will be looking to score these 100 and... Uh, uh, 40 runs, of course, the <coughs> Ghana team would think that they would be uh, in with a chance also, a uh, 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 chance of bowling out the, the Leeward Islands. Uh, and they are going to start with spin from the far end. I say good afternoon to my good friend Visham. <coughs> Taking on the powder, appeal goes up, and uh, <coughs> no response from the the umpire. <coughs> so, Leeward <coughs> Islands chasing one hundred and fourteen. So boys will will face once more. It's a good delivery. Good start there. Right arm off spinner from the far end for Guyana. Back punching finds the gap. Should get at least one. And. Uh, Boyce is off the mark. Players out there in the middle really has that build. And looks as though they can hit the ball a long way. And remember, Earl, although the Guyana team did not get up to 200 and didn't earn that first bonus point, Leeward Island still has a chance to do so. <coughs> so it's Clark who's back and uh, pushing rather tentatively up to mid off. Uh, who is fielded and there's no run. You speak Millington, about that. Millington, of course, the, the bowler from the far end. Defended. I think as the over comes to an end, it gives us that opportunity. Uh, to speak about the manner in which Leeward Islands can achieve that bowling point. And, uh, you know, despite uh, Guyana not getting up to 200 or 220 to earn one and two bowling points respectively, uh, Leeward Islands can still uh, get their one or two bowling points, as the case may be, if they can achieve the target at four runs per over <coughs> or 4.4 runs per over if they if they achieve their target at four runs per over they'll get one bonus point and if they achieve their target at 4.4 runs per over Earl, they would get their two bonus points the two batting points that is yes yeah, so so still a lot in this for the leeward islands of course they would like to get to that target uh their first objective of course would be to uh, try and win this match Lee was, of course, last year did not win any of their matches. In fact, um, they would have picked up their two points from a rained out match. And they came pretty close to beating Guyana last year when Guyana posted 167 batting first. They fell short by one run. So it's Fraser. Bulls a good delivery, that one. 
Touchdown just outside half stump and swerved away from the right handed uh, Fletcher. Some swing there immediately for uh, Fletcher. <coughs> She has a slip, third man, back on the boundary, backward point, cover, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, long leg. As she goes in now, take down the pad, and the appeal goes up, and so does the finger too of umpire Abbott, and uh, Boyce is on her way. Leg before uh, to Shelly and Fraser. Yeah, that one looked pretty dead. And uh, it looked as though it was plumber than a plumber fixing a pipe there. Earl. Tell you what, that was straight. Yes, certainly. And it was a full pitch delivery right up in the black hole. As we look at it again. Yes, certainly. Yeah. We'll have a look at that again. But right on the money there was Fraser. And the appeal was quite convincing as well. And the umpire raises that dreaded finger. And the batter has to go. That's, of course, the, the start the Guyana team would be looking for, uh, defending just 140 runs uh, with just one run on the board. And boys being legged before uh, uh, for just a one run. But this lets in Saxena. Saxena, who was uh, the most prolific of the Leeward Islands batsmen last year. And she goes to the crease at a pivotal spot, number three. And you could hear the Guyanese feelers there out there chirping. They're encouraging their bowlers. Their bowler, they're encouraging Chilean Fraser. Saxena plays it into the pads. <coughs> So it's the ideal start that the Guyanese team would, would have been looking for. Uh, Shelly and Freezer goes away from us. <coughs> Overpitched, and they played up to mid on by Saxena. This is what you want your impact players and your international players to do as well, Earl. Someone like a Sherry and Fraser, you know, who has that international experience. You want an immediate impact, and you want to see them using that experience to great effect. And immediately we saw that from Fraser. Outside the off stump, and uh, Saxena is not offering a shot. Uh, just picking up the line and allowing it through. And what I like as well, and, and on that note of international players coming in and utilizing the experience, immediately when Shermaine Campbell would have seen the ball not carrying through as uh, properly to her, she took two steps up on both ends. And that's very commendable of her as well. Yes, um, experience really coming through. Outside the off stump and she falls down. Does a... Uh Shelly and Fraser, and uh, there was a loud and anguish shout there, and she's there breathing in pain. Let's have a look at that again there, Earl. Very interesting fall there from Fraser, and very unfortunate as well. And we don't see that too often from the Pacers. And immediately, we see all of her players running towards her. This is not a good sign. Your informed player and your wicket taker as well at the top going down. Her. Well, I would have said that she would have missed the tournament. In fact, I think she would have missed all of the uh, Super 50 matches last year through injury. I think yep. she would have come in for the um, T20 Blaze uh, towards the end there. And uh, 
having started today, she would have hoped that she would have been able to go through the whole tournament, and we are hoping that it's not something too serious, but uh, certainly seems so. But I'm trying to work out. It does not seem as though she would have twisted her ankle. So I'm wondering if it's, uh, if, uh, if it's a hamstring or if it's a muscle. But it's difficult to tell. There we go. And you can see that expression on her face immediately, which tells me that it is a definite serious concern for her. And look how she, and there she's limping off. This is not a good sign at all for Cherry and Fraser and the Guyanese team. She's really being assisted there, going off. And as I said, limping. Uh, not a good sign she has picked up that initial wicket. Uh, the first wicket to go down for the Leeward Islands. And uh, based on the way she's walking, might be some sort of a leg injury. But uh, we are not the experts, we are not in the position to, in fact, uh, I notice that, well, let me not say too much on it. Uh, we'll probably get some report on that later on, but uh, it was the last delivery of that particular over, uh, so no one would have to complete that over for her, but rather unfortunate, and no one likes to see uh, cricketers going down and cricketers being hurt. But Millington will continue from the far end. And she's bowling to Clark. Uh, Clark is back and uh, forward, pushes up to mid on. <coughs> Clark is driving up towards uh, mid on there, two for a quick run. The return goes to the keeper's end, but Saxena safely home in the end. It was to the right of mid on. In the air for some time. But in the end, they were safely through for a single. Umpire Abbott hat blows away, and uh, we have seen quite a bit of this today. It's been windy here at St. Paul's. It has died down a bit, but nevertheless, still a good bit of breeze blowing. It's always cool in this neck of the woods here in St. Paul's. Always cool. I think especially with the ocean to the back of the fencing as well, at cool breeze coming across the venue. And, and the sun is quite hot out here. We're not in air conditioning, but it's still quite cool. Thanks to that breeze that <laughs> is blowing through. Very cool. Best place to be today, to look at cricket. <laughs> Many persons might argue that the best place to be is on the <coughs> Wendy's YouTube channel, Earl. Well, certainly. Wendy's <laughs> Cricket YouTube channel, of course. Like and subscribe to the channel. Fended there by Saxena. And a run. So two for one, we are in over number three. Uh, target, of course, 141. Melissa Clark, she's on one. Uh, he is a uh, single out to mid-wicket, deep mid-wicket. And uh, with that single, uh, Saxena, she, she goes to two. So the over comes to an end. A good little over there from Millington. And two overs bowl, just two runs conceded. Well, actually, three runs conceded in her two. So it's a very decent start here from the Guyana team. And it's three for one after three. And uh, 137 runs required from the remaining 47 overs. So a lot of time 
on their hands here is the Leeward Islands team. But if they are to get those two batting points, and they would need to score at a, a run rate of 4.4, as we said earlier. Of course, no batting points for Guyana in this game. Well, what we might consider to be a force bowling change here for Guyana. Uh, looks like... Shinetta Grimond. Shinetta Grimond, who has been brought into the attacks, bowling right arm more spin. This one is turned into the onside by Saxena for run. Of course, uh, Shelly and Fraser uh, sustaining an injury that had to be taken off the field. And uh, perhaps that she remained there, we might have seen a bit more of her. She started well, she picked up the early wicket, the, she had the early breakthrough for Guyana. And uh, it would be Clark who comes back into strike. She is defending. And of course, there's, there's, there's a lot of time in this match. One gets the impression that the, the Leeward Islands would be thinking in terms of getting themselves into a safe position. They've already lost the wicket, defended it to the offside. Yeah, I think it's a concern early to always lose a wicket in the first three overs. And uh, it's never a good thing. Whipped away into the onside, but in fact, uh, it wrong-footed... Uh, the mid wicket fielder, in fact, there's a bit of confusion, and in the end, uh, uh, they just picked up a single. But uh, that was poor cricket. Well, I can't understand why Shinetta Grimond was so far from the stumps. That's what's my concern. She was very far from the stumps, so she had to throw the ball back at the stumps. Had she been closer, that could have been a run out. Saxena pushes up to extra cover. It's fielded, the over comes to an end. It's a very quick end to an over there by Shinetta Grimond. And uh, at the end of that over, <coughs> uh, Lee was four for one. The target, of course, being 141 to win. In fact, five for one. And. Uh, We've had some four overs completed, so uh, the lead was going at just over one run per over. Millington will continue from the far end. <coughs> Millington has been doing an exemplary job with the ball at the start, just two overs. But she has helped in building some pressure. Seems to be something there that Clark's not happy with, or either the umpire. Both of them having a chat. Millington, shortish, turned uh, to the onside, mix up once more. Return goes to the keepers in the end. Saxena was able to regain a ground, but seems to be a bit of misunderstanding between these two players. It was played slightly to the right of short backward square, and Saxena was looking for a run, which Never really seemed to be on. Is pushed into, pushed into the onside. You can hear the doors slamming behind us. Of course, it's very windy here. Pushed into the offside. The, ma the manner in which Milcia Clark is approaching these deliveries, every time that she's stepping forward, I, I'm thinking that she's gonna go big. Well, she goes big now. <laughs> it's gone out towards, in fact, one bounce. That's a good shot. One bounce into the straightish, into the whitish long on a boundary for four. That's a good shot. Well, in local terms, in the Caribbean, she was always sizing up <laughs> there, Earl, throughout the entirety of this over. And there was the one she was looking for. It was in the arc. And she threw all of her hands and power at it. Well, once it clears the inner ring, certainly would run close to the boundary. 
Oh, and there's an appeal. Uh, the bowler holds the head in anguish. So I wonder if he, um, that's a drop catch. Looks very disappointed there, Lafiana Millington. Clark defense goes back up on the offside. He overcomes to an end and uh, uh, leewards. Uh, they are now nine for one. Yeah, so it's a good start for the Ghana team. I think with the wealth of spinners that they, they have in their lineup, Leeward Island's unit, they need to be careful that they don't lose a couple of overs really quickly. With the spinners getting through their overs quickly, it's always a cause of concern where, where the game runs away from you all. So here we see Saxena again. Advancing down the track, looking for a run. It's not on. And uh, Grimond, Shanita Grimond, the, the, in fact, we continue some descent. She uh, replaced uh, the injured uh, Shelly Ann Fraser. Goes in her bowls, shortish, and uh, Saxena stands to a full height. But Saxena seems to be on edge. <coughs> Interestingly named Grimmon, Shanetta Shanata Grimmon. That's oh, so Saxena, this one is down the leg side, an attempted sweep, shot, missed completely through to uh, the keeper Campbell, Sherman Campbell. Of course, she's the captain of this guy and a team. Grimmon once more, <coughs> right arm off spin. Bowls a delivery, tosses it up, and uh, it's defended there by Saxena. But Saxena seems to be a bit on edge. One could sense something here. She's calling for non existent singles. Seems to be a bit nervous. Allows that one through. <coughs> Initially thinking in terms of playing it, but uh, decided against in the end. <coughs> this time she's turning up to short mid wicket. Can't score. The over comes to an end. And what Guyana has been doing well here, they're, they're, they've been uh, keeping the scoring rate in check. They, they're applying the pressure and uh, uh, looking to uh, force an error from these, these, these batters here for the Leeward Islands. Yeah, and they're getting through the overs pretty quickly. And also, they're limiting the extras. Millington, once more. What the Leewards uh, has to realize, though, is that it's a 50-over game, not a 20-20. And there's lots of time left in, in this match. They just need to build a partnership here. Tossed up outside the off stump, and uh, after it goes to the keeper. So I don't think there's, there, 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 there's a pressure of uh, having to score. In fact... They started here needing less than three runs for over in which to win this match. She's back and plays it back to the bowler. Uh, Millington who half stops. Well, if they are to get that bull that batting point sorry or that those two batting points i should say because 4.4 .4 runs per over would get get them those two batting points if they get the, the, the allotted total of 140 in those 31 overs 31.8 overs actually so let's say 32 overs oh, they were definitely in themselves two batting points and that's still a lot of overs 32 overs yes yeah, so, certainly uh, quite a number of overs really and <coughs> I think though the the Lee was first uh, I think first they will be thinking in terms of a good start they will be thinking in terms of safety I 
would rather think that, <laughs> you know, I don't think they, they're too concerned about uh, the batting point at this moment. What they would want to do is to get something to build on and then perhaps later on try and get those batting points. Yep. <clears throat> The poetry does not, does not suggest to me that, though, that they, you know, they're looking to do anything reckless. They're looking to uh, up the tempo. <clears throat> Short swung away, out towards a uh, backward square, uh, just a single. As it's the emergency fieldsman who's on, that's uh, Reti Meyer. Reti Meyer, who is on for... Uh, Shelly and Fraser, who got injured earlier on. Defended there by Clark, goes into the offside. This time she's looking to swing it into the onside. Uh, mistimed it completely, and the ball goes as far as short back was square, where it was fielded. And uh, there's no run. This time it's pushed into the offside. And uh, it's the extra cover fees and there's no run. Defended once more. Goes into the onside. Goes up to short mid wicket. It's feeling it. The over comes to an end, and uh, at the end of that over, uh, the leewards uh, ten. They are ten for two, so ten for one. Sorry, and this is pretty slow going here by the Leeward Islands. Yeah, just like that, we're already past eight overs, and the wealth of spinners being utilised there by Jimmy and Campbell. This one goes down to point, and uh, Millington feels there's no run. In fact, Millington is operating from the far end. And what Guyana has done well here too, they, they have their fielders in run-saving position. They're not giving away any easy runs here. Play back up on the onside this time by Saxena. So they're not giving away any much runs with their fielders, and also in terms of extras, they have held it up nicely. Millington once more, Saxena is defending once more. It's, it's consistency that I like from the Guyanese bowlers. They're hitting those tight line and lengths early and a con on a consistent basis. They are, but the, the leewards, they, they would have to be careful here, though. They, they cannot allow the bowlers to dictate to them too much. They, they need to find ways and means of rotating the strike. They cannot just allow the bowlers to bowl to them because uh, you might find they might be batting for 50 deliveries and not really scoring any runs, maybe just picking up uh, five or six runs. And... Uh, applying more pressure to, to, to the team's effort. Yeah, and when you speak about women's cricket, the women's cricket that's happening at the moment, yes, we have the CG United <coughs> uh, Women's Super 50 tournament. There's also the women's IPL that's going on as well. Today we saw RCB women taking on UPW. And uh, RCB women... Swan is edged down towards the yeah, backward point region and uh, just a single there to Clark. Yeah, RCB women would have won by 23 runs. Someone who really stands out on the international scene, a Smriti Mandana from India. She had 80 or 50 deliveries. So we, we, we are seeing, uh, you know, it's a star studded. WPL, of course, quite a number of the female stars on show. And here is Saxino playing one into the into a four short leg position. 
away from any of the feelers, but she uh, certainly seemed to be rather uncertain as to what shot she should have played to that one. Similar manner in which Gajnabi got out in the first innings. We also saw earlier uh, Elise Perry getting 58, Alyssa Healy 55, Dipti Sharma 33, and Poonam Kemna 31. Quite a number of stars you've called there. And of course, you have uh, uh, stars like Amelia Cody in New Zealand, their all round uh, female cricketer. And quite a number of stars in that. Uh, some. Some of the best in world cricket in that WPL. We cannot forget, of course, our own Haley Matthews, who's, who's there playing for the Mumbai Indians. Yep. So, star studded tournament, of course, female tournament. But Guyana very much in control here at the moment. It's just 11 for 1, and uh, we have had some 9, in fact, 10 overs completed. Uh, so the Leeward Islands going at just over 1 run per over. It is 1.1 1 .1 and over, and a lot of 1s on the scorecard. 11 for 1 after 10, and so Plafiana Millington only conceding 1 in her last over. So first, a power play being completed. Even Island, the, the batters, they are just allowing the guy and his bowlers to bowl to them. Uh, they are not looking to retain strike. And here is a swing and a miss. Fak might have taken her on the left part going down the leg side. Uh, yeah, I think they, they are putting too much pressure on themselves here, the Leeward Islands team. And that was a pressure shot, no doubt about it, there from Melissa Clark. Well, the Midona has gone back to long on now, so she has forced uh, at least one back. She's defending, gets a delivery which is tossed up. Delivery which could have been driven over long off. It driven straight. And uh, I think this is one of the problems, the, the, you know, the offside play. That's one of the complaints. The offside play for these players has not been good. The hesitation, but in the end, the single easily taken. Yeah, and we remember <coughs> that the head coach would have mentioned that the offside play, and he said that in this tournament, you would tend to see them looking to play a bit more on the offside. And certainly, you pointed out it, it is a concern at the moment. It's showing. Millington once more tosses up, and uh, Saxena is bent on defending. If anyone is wondering where Cherry Ann Fraser is, she was down for the count while running into Bull. And uh, one would hope that she is okay. We were wishing, uh, wishing her a speedy recovery and hope that it's not too serious. At the end of 11, it's 12 for 1. As soon as we have some news on her injury, we will let you guys know immediately what's the, the status. We do hope, though, it's good news. We do hope, though, that it's nothing too serious with uh, Sherry Ann Fraser. Shadita Kuman will continue from this end, but this one is pushed into the onside for a single and uh, it's one more to clock but somehow I sense though that the Leeward Island battles they're playing right into the hands of the, the Guyanese team this yeah they're, they're giving it up so to speak 11 overs and 13 for one yes it's good bowling by the Guyana team but you can't let a bowling team consistently get the better of you uh, this much. Sometimes in a case like this, Earl, you want someone to, to go in there and, you know, put, take the attack to the bowlers just to get things back in your favor. 
I don't think it's even a question of taking the attack so much. Uh, one gets the impression that they're not looking to work the ball around and look, uh, you know, look, look to pick up singles. They're just bent on defending. Yeah, that's the that's flip side of it as well. So th there's, all, there's mm -hmm. that case of someone going in and attacking the ball. It's also a case of the two batsmen at the crease, you know, looking to rotate the strike. That's all. You know, we have seen deliveries that could have been worked into gaps and pick up a, a single or two. You don't necessarily have to be thinking in terms of getting boundaries at this exactly. stage. Exactly. You know, just keep the scoreboard moving. Delivery like that should have been put away. Well, Shanita Agreement uh, seems to be helping out a bit now. They, she has bowled <laughs> two wides in this over so far. Yeah, she's just trying to keep it very tight and just overcompensating. But as you rightly said, that delivery, previous delivery should have been put away. Uh, here we see they, pick, they pick, picked up an easy single, just placing it into the gap a bit. Well, that makes it even tougher. When you're soaking up so much deliveries and building pressure, when you get a bad delivery, you want to try to at least put it away. Here's a delivery which I felt could have been dealt with. It was tossed up, but a rather tentative push back to the bowler, and uh, the over comes to an end. But uh, they would have picked up a, a few runs in that over, which would have done the Leeward Island scores a bit of good. But, uh, you know, it's a question of getting to back down. And uh, as I earlier said, allowing the bowlers to bowl to them. We have seen a, a bowling change. Another spinner coming in, Ashmini Munisa. Of course, Munisa had a very good tournament last year. So. Munisa number 14 on her back. The off spinner. Going to Divya Saxena. Saxena defends well, but uh, she has been doing that for quite some time now, defending well, but she has not been able to get the ball off the square. Gets one outside the off stump, allows it through. Yeah, so a good start here by Munisa, and she's just continuing the good work that all of the players have done thus far for the Guyanese team with the ball in hand. See, one, uh, one of the problems with the Leeward Islands batters, uh, they're not accustomed to winning. So, uh, perhaps one of the reasons for this tentative approach is a quick single, the short mid wicket. And this is much better, just taking the pace off and easing it into the gaps and getting an easy, an easy single. Yeah, that's more like it from Saxena. I think the, 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 the battles, they, they would have to be prepared to run hard, look to pick up uh, quick singles. Excellent delivery right up into the block hole. And they're true for a quick single. That's good running and I'm not too sure if they heard us, we are starting to see some urgency now between Saxena and Clark. A little, if anything. Well, they certainly would have used up enough deliveries now to, to get the pace of the pitch. And here we see good running this time, going back quickly for a second run. So runs beginning to flow. In fact, three runs, as that has been signaled wide. But the, the Leeward Islands, though, they would have to find some way of playing the, the Guyanese bowling. The, bo the bowling attack, of course, are uh, very much dependent on spin bowlers. And this is good. Turned into the onside for a single. And this is what I've been speaking of. 
Yeah, certainly. As the 13th over comes to an end, it's 21 for 1. And it's real slow going here for the Leeward Islands women's team. If you're just joining us, Ghana women, they were inserted to bat first, dismissed for 139. And uh, the Leeward Islands team, doing an excellent job with the ball in hand, could have been a bit more or less than uh, 139. However, some feeling blemishes and some drop catches, of course, included in that, would have allowed them to get to this. And now the Leeward Islands, in an effort to get to 140 for victory, they are on the back foot very early. 13 overs have already been bowled, 22 for one. And we are seeing yet another bowling change and another spinner. Schultz coming into the attack. So the lady with the German name leaves one a rather tentative attempt there by uh, Saxena. Uh, uh, it's a sort of nothing shot. Uh, I'm still a bit baffled as to what shot she was trying to play just now. But in the end, she missed it. The stumps were broken and uh, no damage done in the end. So Schultz, left arm. She's going around the wicket to the right handed Saxena. Cena is pushing into the offside, screw up the wicket, and can't score. Six from two, from 42 deliveries, though, Livia Saxena. And she has been rather tentative, as is, is rather uncertain of herself. Tossed up, and she's put this one, in fact, up to mid-wicket. Uh, with feel led there by the emergency fieldsman with, with, with team here. Well, the one fielder that's out on the boundary on the on side, of all people, Saxena finds her. Outside the off stump and uh, Clark does not play a shot. That happens when you get bogged down. It's very difficult to, to find the gaps when you allow yourself to be bogged down. But it's Schultz once more. Tossed up, driven in the air past the diving figure of uh, short mid wicket and down to uh, long on for single. Excellent period of play here for the Guyanese team. And Guyana will be loving this period also because uh, the runs are not coming quickly. Uh, they have picked up a wicket. And uh, of course, they, they are pushing up the, the asking rate. And if they could continue to string maidens after maidens, you know, and apply the pressure to the batters, they, they could certainly find themselves in a very good position, a position from which uh, they could win this game. Yeah, definitely so. And at the moment, the game running away from uh, the Leeward Islands team. Pushed into the offside by Clark. Uh, Melissa Clark on 11 from 34, 24 for one. Good delivery there from Munisa. Munisa is someone who uh, keeps it very tight. An attempted swing and a miss. In fact, white signal. This one is in the air. It goes up to middle of the catch is taken and Clark is on the way. Uh, caught off the bowling of Munisa. And the Leeward Islands lose their second wicket. So uh, here we, we had it. The, the batters getting bogged down and in the end giving it away. Yeah, it looks as though Barcoin would have taken the catch. 
And that's the second wicket down. A pressure shot there from uh, Militia Clark, the big hitter from the Leeward Islands team. And the demise is upon us. It's 25 for the loss of two. And looks as though they're going to be a water break, will it? Actually, water has been brought on for the players, not for the umpires. Actually, there will be no water break just yet, so a good little passage of play here for the Guyanese team and that pressure really showing for the Leewards. Yes, and uh, they certainly allow themselves to be bogged down there. Uh, played themselves into a corner, and in the end, uh, uh, they gave away, Clark gave away a wicket in the end. But a very crucial uh, part of this match coming up. The captain, Edwards, goes to the crease. And uh, uh, she would have gotten a good score last year. She would have gotten uh, some 74 runs in one particular innings. And uh, she, no doubt, would be looking to uh, get this innings going for the Leeward Islands because one sense that the, the Leeward Islands inning we, 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 we play has not really uh, gotten off the ground as yet. They're, they're struggling at 20-25 uh, for two. And we're in over number 15. But defended there, pushed into the offside there by the captain Edwards, no run. Munisa, it was pushes into the offside. And uh, I think this, the, these two would be two of the, the better batters for the Leeward Islands. Uh, so these two need to bat uh, for quite some time. T pushed into the onside, goes up to mid on. It's feeling no run, so successful over comes to an end there by Munisa. He was 25 for two. So we have had some 15 overs completed, 25 for two, which means that the Leewards need another 115 runs. They have Another 35 overs in which to do so. Schultz to Saxena. Turns up to short backward square. Thinks of a run. The captain is not interested. They have another 20 overs to get the first batting point if they can chase down the score of 140. Tossed up, driven nicely by Saxena, but straight to mid-off. Yeah, if they can chase down the score of 140 in 35 overs, they can get that first batting point, 32, to get two batting points. Turned into the onside for single. And the substitute comes into play, she feels. And... Uh, one to Saxena. But there's nothing like being accustomed to winning, though. And uh, I, I think this is one of the problems confronting the Leewards. And she's, my goodness, she's almost bold there. The captain, how that missed the stumps, I would not know. That was very close. Let's have a look at that again. Oh, a coat of paint or two there, Earl. And that would have been curtains. Smash back to the bowler. That's a good stop. Uh, we speak of coat of paint sometimes, but sometimes we see ball striking the stumps and the bales not being dislodged. <laughs> so 
it's pushed back into the offside. And uh, the Guyanese girls there, they're really vocal out there. They, they sense that they're on top. Yeah, they're certainly on top at 25 or 26 for two after 16. You, you can't give the Leewards that top spot. Guyana certainly on top. With us remain good throughout though. And from all appearances, uh, it seems as though we are going to have a full day's play without any interruption. Which of course is, is very good for, for, for the game. Munisa is back with her third over. Confusion again. Uh, there we saw the ball being played into the onside, just back out of square. And the Saxena was setting off for the single. Uh, the captain was slow in response, and uh, in the end, they got home safely. That's an excellent delivery. Not much the batter can do with that, Amanda Edwards. Here we go again. Uh, Hoyt across the line. A lot of bottom hand into the shot, playing it up to mid on. Uh, and she could have easily played it over, back over the bowler's head. Oh my goodness, here we go again. Mix up. Um, Saxena is on the floor, she's on her back. But she seems to be pretty okay. So it's all happening out there at the moment. And the guy in the team really sensing something is going to happen. As this one is pushed up to mid off by uh, the captain for the leeward, Edwards. No run scored. Slip backward point, cover, extra cover, mid off. Mid on short mid wicket, deep mid wicket. And. Uh, Shot backwards square. So the over comes to an end. And it's 27 for two leeways. Saxena is defending once more. It goes up to uh, short mid wicket. Uh, Schultz, left arm. Around the wicket. Tosses up. It's in the air. Just short of the field of the uh, Short backward square. And uh, really and truly, the Leeward Islands, they 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 they're. Uh, digging themselves into a hole here. They're not scoring. They're not picking up singles. They're not picking up boundaries. And they're offering catches. Tossed up and swung away. This time it could go close to the boundary. In fact, it does so now. And four runs to succeed now. And uh, whoa. Below there as... Saxena struck that boundary, so uh, four good-looking runs there to the Leeward Islands. Much needed at this point, too. Schultz. Quicker delivery, quicker, flatter. This one is played up to mid-off. 
Rhode Island supporters down there very rather vocal. I suspect it's uh, some of the teammates of the Lee Rhode Island squad. Defended by Saxena, it goes into the offside. The run. Schultz once more. Tosses up and swept around down to square leg. Just for a single, Retima feels. And uh, just one more to the score. So Saxena being able to pick up a couple runs. And uh, the Leewards now, they have gone into the 30s. They're now 32 for two. We have had some 18 overs completed. And they're still below two runs for over. Looks like very much like a catch there, going down. Fila is on her knees. Uh, might have sustained some sort of injury there to her fingers. Faxi is looking at the fingers and uh, seems to be okay. So play will continue here for uh, this match between the Leewards and Guyana. That's Millington who is at first slip. Now this one is played into the cover by Saxena. <coughs> so this one is driven nicely. But uh, just as far as a uh, shortish extra cover, no run is scored. Saxena, she's on 14. Gets this one down to backward point. Can't score. Amanda Edwards, the captain, she is yet to get off the mark. She has been there for some time. She has faced a number of deliveries. Once more it goes down to point. Once more there's no run. As Munisa continues from the far end. Outside the off stump. Wide of the off stump. And Munisa seems to have gotten away with that one. So... Uh, the over comes to an end, uh, the Leeward Islands 32 for 2. Shoots, over tosses, and uh, it's missed badly there by Edwards. Struck on the pad, but clearly outside the line of leg stump. Schultz once more. Flatter, played up, in fact beats, uh, mid on, and goes across the boundary ropes now for four. So. 
Bad bit of feeling there uh, by uh, the Milan fielder. And uh, allowing four runs. So four welcome runs there for the Leeward Islands. And uh, uh, Gaznabi, of course, the guilty party, guilty of allowing one through for four. Tossed up in the air, over, extra cover. And uh, a single there to the captain Edwards. So she goes to five. And uh, looking to up the tempo a bit now. Tossed up and turned uh, around the corner, but straight to uh, the backward square fielder, and there's no run. So it's Schultz once more. Left arm around. This one is a bit flatter. And defended there by Saxena. Schultz once more goes in now, bowls outside the off stump, punching it up to extra cover. And uh, <clears throat> no run as the ball cannot uh, beat the fielder. Overcomes to an end. And uh, players take a break, the first drink, drink break uh, in this inning. So we do take a break and we'll be back with you momentarily.
we're back here about to recommence after the water break. I was just looking at some scores around the country. Uh, Jamaica doing pretty well. Uh, scoring 289 against Barbados. And uh, Stephanie Taylor getting 93. And Henry 94. And Aline 3 for 24 for Barbados. But here we see one being played by Edwards back up the track uh, to Munisa, no run. TNT 185, uh, Corby getting 59 in that match against the Windward Islands. Windward Islands at 25 for no loss. Munisa once more. This one is in the air, but away from any fields, man, and just a single to Edwards. So uh, Barbados, in reply to that 289 scored by Jamaica, they are eight for no loss. And uh, we perhaps will provide further updates, but we are, we are, we are here with the uh, Leeward Islands. 37, uh, 38 for two to be quite exact. This one is pushed quietly into the onside. Uh, it's picked up and there's no run. One is driven up to extra cover by Saxena. Uh, he can't score. And uh, just to remind this, does that guy in a batted first? And uh, after the boy inserted, they score 139. Tossed up and uh, just gently pushed out there to extra cover uh, by Saxena. No one scored. So for Guyana Ga Gaznabi, she got 20. And uh, we had the top scorer being uh, Grimond. Uh, she scored 32. And for the Leeward Islands women, we had uh, Claxton Leibold. Uh, Picking up two wickets apiece, and um, Hector, she picked up three for 11, the pick of the bowlers. But back with the action here. It's going to be a bowling change from the, this, the pavilion end. And we see... A delivery which is tossed up, driven in the air, driven out towards the long off boundary, and it's four. And that's a good shot by Edwards. Four runs, tossed up, and driven straight, driven down to long off, and uh, picking up four. So, that four takes the leewards into the 40s, 42 it is. And it's Lakshman who goes in once more and bowls. This one is short and punch back past Lakshman. Goes up to long off. And uh, a single is easily taken. Quite a number of spinners in this uh, guy in his outfit. Lakshman once more. Right arm leg speak. Turn down to backward square, no run this time. So it's Lakshman. Right arm leg spin goes away from us. Bowls. Uh, rather. In fact, it goes past extra cover. And uh, it goes uh, down to Longon for single. And the 
Islands come in a lot easier for the Leeward Islands. They're now 45 uh, for 2. Tossed up, taking on the pad, clearly missing the leg stump. That one, uh, obviously, the googly there from Latchman. And uh, Saxena, in fact, Edwards being struck on the pad, but the ball clearly missing leg stump. On once more, this one is swept and swept nicely uh, by Edwards. It's going out towards the backward square boundary, slows up just inside the boundary, and they're back for two. But outfield, which has been sluggish in parts, allowing the, in fact, um, slowing that one down just inside the boundary, the backward square boundary. Uh, but two runs to Edwards, so uh, runs coming a lot. Uh, more freely for the Leeward Islands at this stage. Well, of course, we just seen on this screen there one of the sponsors, uh, Daffabet, is one of the sponsors for the uh, CG uh, West Indies Women Super uh, 50. Uh, looks like another bowling change from the far end coming up just had Latchman bowling one over from this end Amanda Edwards she's on 13 uh, Saxena she's on 15 So one is pushed into the offside. And it goes up to Wydish Miroff. And Saxena can't score. Saxena is defending. Goes into the offside, which we let the end is no run. So Gajna B, uh, the bowler from the far end. And uh, might have been taking the bat away at the last moment, Saxena. And through it went to the keeper, 47 for two, and over number 22. Played up to extra cover this time by Saxena. Can't beat the fielder and she can't score. Guys, let me once more. This time it's defended there by Saxena. It goes up on the offside. It's fielded by the bowler. And uh, there's no run. There is a defensive push once more. Once more it goes into the offside. Once more there's no run. So a good uh, first over there uh, by Gajna B. Keeping things in check and uh, preventing the batters from scoring. So Latchman will continue from this, the 
But Villanen, leg spin in the air, out towards backward point, catch is taken, and Edwards is on the way. So it was a shortish leg spin as she was back, looking to force to the offside. A ball peeled off from the outer portion of the bat and went down to a uh, backward point uh, with a catch was taken uh, by uh, uh, Grimond, uh, that's Senita Grimond, and uh, Gajna B is on the way back. So, in fact, it's boys going out now. So, the captain for the Leeward Islands, Hurricanes depart. It's now uh, 46 for three. Guyana, of course, really fighting back at this stage of the game. They have been able to keep things tight and uh, they have been able to pick up wickets also. So, very critical blow struck there by Ghana, getting the captain, Edwards. So, but it's Boyce who picks up the line of that one. Outside the off stump and does not play a shot, allows it through to the keeper. Forty-six for three. Tossed up and defended there by Boyce. Boyce, of course, the wicket keeper in this the Leeward Islands team, playing in the first match for the Leeward Islands. Uh, settles. Gets one down the onside, swings that, misses the ball, beats the keeper, goes down towards a very short and very straight fine leg position, and they were able to come through for. Uh, in fact, a wide, so uh, two runs there uh, to the uh, Leeward Island score. This time uh, we have perhaps Axina defending. It goes back up on the offside for uh, Latchman to field, and there's no run. So this could be a very close encounter. Guyana, of course, fighting back and fighting back nicely. That's one once more. Tosses up. Swung in the air for some time. Down to backward square. They're taking the first one back for the second run. And gets it quite easily in the end as the return comes in. And uh, add two more to the score. Tosses up and driven into the offside by Saxena. Uh, no run. So Gaznabi will continue from the fine. She's bowling right arm. Uh, slow, medium pace. B has a third man right back on the boundary, backward point cover. This one is played up to extra cover. No run. 
so there's the extra cover in place, uh, mid off, and on the on side, uh, there's a short fine leg, mid wicket deep, defended by Boyce. There's a short mid wicket and uh, mid on. Fifty one for three leewards. This certainly has been a perfect ca Caribbean day. Blue skies, hardly a cloud in the sky. Driven but up to mid on. And the boys cannot score. Driven once more by uh, boys, but this time straight back at the bowler, Gajna B. And she feels to her own bowling. Target, of course, 140. Wide of the off stump, in fact, signal wide. Uh, uh, not taken cleanly by uh, Campbell, the keeper. It goes down to a short third man and allowed uh, an extra run. So two runs there to uh, the Leeward Islands. And those two runs will take them on to uh, 53 for three. And we're in over number 25. So they're just going at just over two runs over. As Gaznaby once more bows outside the off stump, driven up to cover this time, they get the, the single. And uh, one more to the score. Turned into the onside for a single by boys. So Gaznaby overcomes to an end. And it's now uh, 54, 54 for three the Leewards. So Latchman will continue and she goes away from us and bows to Boyce. Boyce gets a uh, delivery, straightens on her and she defends well. Plays it into the offside. Campbell, of course, still making adjustment to a field. The onside, she has a, a square leg backward, right on the boundary, mid wicket back on the boundary. This one is pushed into the onside, no run. Gajna B, she's at deepish mid on, about three quarter way to the boundary. As Latchman will continue, goes in now, right arm leg spin, tosses up, and Boyce is just pushing gently back to the bowler who feels to her own bowling, there's no run. Latchman once more, right arm, leg spin. Tosses up outside the leg stump, an attempted sweep shot missed by Boyce. And uh, in fact, they're getting a second run as the ball is overthrown. It goes into the offside and uh, uh, two runs in the end. As Grimon remonstrates, she, she thought that that should have been backed up. Uh, by someone else in the offside, but in the end, 
Uh, she fumbled a bit and allowed an easy second run. Tossed up and uh, gently pushed back there by Boyce to the bowler who feels and there's no run. Boyce, of course, Boyce, of course, a uh, powerfully built young lady. Tossed up and she's inside a wicket and uh, drops it in front of her. It goes back to the bowler, rolls back to the bowler, no run. So last one looked in, looking to temp. Uh, the batter goes in once more. Now right arm, leg spin, tosses up. Outside the half stump, punched up to cover point. Uh, well fielded there by Schultz, and there's no run. As the B will continue from the far end, uh, she's bowling right arm, a slow medium, and she's bowling over the wicket. Uh, comes in now to Saxena, who plays up to mid on and goes to for a quick single. The return there by Schultz misses the stumps. Gas the B's on the carpet. And uh, in the end, a single easily taken there by the Leeward Islands batters. And uh, one more to uh, Saxena. And with that single, she has moved on to 19. And uh, boys on strike now, pushing up to extra cover. And can't score. As it goes there to uh, Munisa. Has to be once more. Oh, this is a mighty blow. It's in the air. It's in the air. It's going out towards long on. Just a single, though. Just a single for all that effort. Uh, mid on, Schultz had some running to do. She had to uh, chase back over her shoulder. And uh, in the end, she did not get the end time. Uh, to take in, in the catch. The ball dropped and plotted, and just a single. Uh, Saxena is defending back to Gashna B who feels a no run. Uh, this time she's. Uh, bottom edge, in fact, an inside edge into the onside up to a uh, short mid wicket. And she can't score. Outside the off stump, and then uh, no a shot offered by uh, Saxena. So it goes to the keeper. So. Uh, three wickets are down for the Leewards there, chasing, of course. Uh, 139, uh, 140, in fact, to win. That's when we'll continue from the uh, pavilion end. She goes away from us. Tosses up, voices back. Keeps it out. Rather dangerous looking shot going back onto her stumps. Uh, but kept it out well. Last one once more. Right arm leg spin. Short, keeping a bit low outside the off stump, punched up to extra cover. Yeah. 
This one is an attempted swing. She misses. A loud appeal goes up. And probably missing leg stump that one. Now we see some adjustment in the field. See, there's a short backward square being put in place. There's a square leg right back on the boundary, deep mid wicket. Tossed up and driven through the legs of the bowler, Latchman. And uh, they get an, an easy single in the end. And here's one looping into the air from the uh, parts of uh, Saxena. Sixty for three, the Leewards. They're going after 139, 140 to win. Pushed uh, gently into the offside. And uh, it's Millington who's in the way. He can't score. He overcomes to an end. And uh, it's 64 3, the Leeward Islands. Gaznambi wants more to boys who drives. And she's looking to turn this one into the onside. The mist taken on the pad. The appeal goes up but not supported by umpire Carolyn Brown at the far end. And here's one swung out towards the long and boundary. It goes across the boundary ropes, and that's a very good hit there by Boyce. It was overpitched by Gashna B, and she gave it full treatment, swung it, over the infield and into the boundary for four. And Schultz, who is stationed at mid on, never had a chance of pulling that one back. So it's actually 64 for three. So this could go down to the wire. We could have a very close match here. Defended by Boyce, it goes into the offside. And uh, no runs as Millington comes into field. So Gasner be once more. In fact, Midon has been pushed back a bit. This one is swung lustily past the outstretch hand of uh, backward square, in fact, forward square, and into the boundary for four. That's a good shot. Powerfully struck there by uh, the burly looking boys. That's power. So Gajna B being roughed up a bit here by boys. And with that four, the score is rushed on to 68 uh, for three the Leeward Islands. Gaznabi once more. She's playing this nicely, but straight to Millington, who misfeels at extra cover and allows a single. So 
Uh, the Ghana team seems to be wilting a bit on the pressure at this point. One more to the score. 69 uh, for three, the Leeward Islands. So Guyana, who would have held it tight for quite a bit, uh, losing it a bit in that particular over, conceding some uh, nine runs. And uh, uh, Leeward Islands uh, advancing towards what is a very small total. So boys will face now. Tossed up, driven, but knocked down nicely there. At a short mid wicket. Uh, by Bakau. This one is in the air, the catch is put down. It was in the air for some time uh, at the fielder there at short backward square, the emergency fielder, uh, came in, got to it, did all the hard work, and in the end she grasped it. Not, never judged it well at all, the Reti Meyer, and a chance go begging. And she's taking on the pad, the appeal goes up, and uh, certainly that sounded like two songs there. The, Butter is showing a bat, but of course, uh, you know, that's a bit of descent. Uh, the umpire's finger went up. And uh, that certainly did not look out from, from, from the replay. Uh, in fact, I, I would like to have a look at that, uh, where, where that one pitched also. That seemed to be missing. That seemed to be missing also not only appeared to have taken an edge but that seemed to be uh missing 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 leg stump that that certainly was the googly day from latchman and uh uh Saxena a bit unfortunate to be given out but nevertheless the the umpire she about she's in the best position and uh Saxena had to make her way back so Claxton goes out there. Jazara Claxton goes out there for the Leeward Islands. And the welcome break through there for uh, the Ghanaian team. Claxton, of course, has been elevated to uh, be vice captain of this Leeward Islands team. And uh, lots of responsibility being put on her young shoulders. She would have had some exposure, would have uh, her last tour with the West Indies A team, a women's A team to Pakistan. Gets one outside the off stump and. Uh, uh, rather tentative looking shot, as if she was going to punch it, looking to punch it to the offside and uh, try to withdraw the bat at the last moment. The ball uh, striking the bat and going down to a short third man. Tossed up and she's driving nicely, but uh, straight to Reti Maya, who is at uh, cover, and there's no run. Latchman once more. Tosses up, Claxton plays it back to the bowler who feels. And a successful over there for Latchman, picking up the wicket of Saxena. And the Leewards now uh, 59 for three.
So looks like a bowling change from the far end and Millington is back. Toss is up and the boys is driving straight back to her. No run. So Gajna B was roughed up a bit in the last over, in her previous over, been taken out of the attack. And the Millington being brought back. She comes in her right arm. Boyce is defending. And uh, no run. Millington once more. Outside the half stump, played up to extra cover. In fact, a bad bounce there. Uh, to Schultz. Seems as though it almost got her uh, in the face area. But she seems to be pretty okay. Boyce once more. Millington, the bowler. She's playing it nicely in the air. Out uh, towards long on straight. And gets a single. Long on is wide and had to move quite a bit to her left. And uh, in the end, uh, just a single there to, to boys. So the left hand, uh, the Zara Claxton comes in to strike. Uh, three, four wickets down for the Leeward Islands. She's batting at number six, vice captain of this uh, Leeward Islands team. 71 it is for four. And we could have a close finish here this afternoon on hand. Then is defending, gets it into the offside. No run. Tossed up in the air, out. My goodness. It was held back a bit there by, by Millington, given a bit more air, tossed up. And uh, here we see. Yes, given a bit more here and catching practice there, uh, given there by, by Claxton and playing it quite tamely uh, to short extra cover on Leeward Islands. Lose another wicket, Claxton going uh, for no score and the Hector goes to the crease. So we do have a new batter at the Queen sector. It is it was the last delivery of that particular over. And uh, this rings voice on strike. Uh, she has been there for some time. She is on 14. As this one goes into the leg gully area. And uh, Reti is quickly around the field and there's uh, no run. So Lee was really struggling at this point, losing five wickets. Tossed up and driven in the air back to the bowler and she's on away. My, my, my. Held back a bit there by the leg spinner and the boys was playing it straight back to the bowler who took one of the easiest of catches you would ever get in cricket, and Boyce is on away. So Lee was plunged into further trouble. They have now lost their sixth wicket, and they're now 71 for six. So Guyana are just scoring some 139 runs, and uh, will it now go into the crease? Will it, of course, 
was the captain of the Leeward Islands team last year. Uh, did not do too well with the bat. In fact, I think uh, uh, she would have had a high score in, during that tournament of 15, and uh, uh, that 15 runs she might have gotten uh, in the T20 Blaze. And certainly she had a poor time with the bat last year. And uh, it's no doubt she'll be looking to do a lot better here this afternoon, probably trying to take uh, her team home. Of course, she's not the captain, but uh, she would be looking to prove her worth. Uh, in fact, she had a string of low scores last year, scores well below uh, double figures. And uh, certainly as captain, she... You know, did not do too well, but uh, we see, in fact, what's going on here? Yeah, um, well, oh, it seems as though there is an issue uh, probably with Willett's pad. Uh, probably her boot, we'll be seeing a while uh, as players. Uh, uses the opportunity. In fact, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, a boot. Uh, she she's having them replaced at the moment. Well, the, the issue there seemed to have been ironed out. Uh, uh, Sinelda Willett, um, she probably was requested to have a change of boot. Um, she's ready now, ready to go 71 for six. And uh, short, and she's pushing into the offside. Uh, no run. Still trying to get the official scores sorted out. We were told that Guyana made 139. Uh, so we get some. Uh, this time she's getting a run. She's off the mark with the second delivery. And I can hear some applause below for Willett, who had a very poor run last year 72 now for uh, six. And suddenly this game has, has really swung a Guyana's way in a big way. Hector, who has just gone to the crease, gets one and is swinging mightily. Might have come from the pad, looped into the offside. And uh, chased down there by Campbell. No run. So Latchman will continue. She's bowling right arm leg spin for Guyana. Tosses up and... Uh, Hector 
keeps it out and uh, no run is scored. So, Ghana now sensing that they're back on top. And the Leeward Islands will need a, a good little partnership here. Uh, still within reach, um, the 139. And uh, we'll have to get some confirmation on that official score. But in that uh, score for Guyana, we had uh, Grimman getting 37. And uh, we also had, uh, and that's our Grimman that is getting 37. But Millington bowls and bowls are. My goodness, that one turned back at Willet and knocked back uh, the center stump. Uh, very good delivery indeed, and she's on her way just for a single. There we saw it again. Good delivery. Uh, starting on her boat off stump, and uh, Willie spinning back. And they're knocking back uh, the, the, the center stump. So poor on her form continues for Willet. She. She has picked up where she left off last year. It's now 72 for 7, Lily Woods. So Martin goes to the crease. And at this rate, this could be over very quickly. Just uh, two minutes past uh, three. And certainly it has been a lovely day for cricket here at uh, the St. Paul's Recreation Ground. Very nice old feel. Nice setting. Um, some banana trees uh, just there in the background. And perhaps after the game... Uh, we might have to explore there to see if there are any bananas <laughs> on those trees. <laughs> well, I don't want to end up elsewhere. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, um, St. Paul's a very fruitful area. Lots of rain in these parts. As Millington comes in on bowls to Martin, Martin is stretching well forward. Goes back to uh, Millington no run. As we look out, we see lots of coconut trees also. And uh, St. Paul's has been renowned for lots of breadfruit tree. Played up to short mid-wicket by Martin Noron. Of course, the joining field is where uh, they do play football. The St. Paul's football team, I'll get back to that in a while. Punched up to mid-off by Martin Noron. The St. Paul's football team over the years has been uh, the, one of the leading teams in, in St. Kitts. They, they have won many championships. This time it's played up to extra cover by Martin and there's no run. So they have done very well. The adjoining field, of course, uh, the football field and uh, uh, local matches. In fact, uh, matches in the St. Kitts football sink. The Saint Kitts Football Association, they, they, they would have been played here. But the over comes to an end, and it's 72 for 7, the, the Leeward Islands. But it's an area rich in sports. And uh, I know uh, Terence Ward, the member of the Leeward Islands Hurricane team, he, he comes from this area. And in the past, Terence Ward, of course, being one of the uh, better footballers in sync, it's been a striker, but opted to, uh, to concentrate mainly on cricket. Very talented sportsman. And he's currently with the uh, Leeward Islands Hurricane setup. But it's Latchman who continues, driven eerily by Hector. She gets a run, gets off the mark, a loud cheer below us as it goes out to straight this mid-wicket for Retimaya to field. One run to 
uh, to Hector. So it's now 73 for 7, the Leeward Islands. And they're going after 139. Um, one score sheet suggests 142, but uh, hopefully we, we shall get a confirmation as to what the exact uh, score the, the Leeward Islands are chasing. Uh, defended there by Martin, goes into the offside. And uh, it's fielded there by Millington. There's no run. Dutchman once more, right arm leg spin. Tosses up to Martin, and Martin is swinging at and missing. The appeal goes up there through for a run. And a uh, bit unsighted there by the bowler. I don't know, in fact, yes, a leg by his signal, so it would have struck on the pad. And obviously missing stumps. There was no real appeal from any of the Guyanese players. Uh, so Latsman will continue. Tosses up, and uh, Hector defends. He was on the onside, and uh, there's no run. Now we see Midoff retreating to uh, long off. Just about uh, seven meters away from in the air, over mid wicket. And down to Wetimayo, who misses it, and it goes into the boundary for four. So four runs there to Hector. In fact, Wetimayo seemed to have had it all covered. Came across to a left from a position at mid-wicket, and the ball went through, and we've seen quite a bit of this today, and uh, went into the boundary for four. An attempted swing and missed there by the keeper. It's going down towards uh, third man. And in fact, the stumps are broken. The appeal goes up. And the finger goes up also. And uh, she's run out. And uh, we have lots happening here. The widest signal. Let's see. She's swinging up. Missing, missing the keeper. Uh, they're looking for the second run. And let's see, the return is in, and her bat certainly seems to have been in the air, and she's on her way, run out. So, uh, the end is nigh here for the uh, Leeward Islands, as Leibold goes to the crease. Eight wickets down, 75 for eight, and is very much in favor of Guyana at this point. So Lee Woods really capitulating here at this point. At one point, they were going quite well, but one got the impression that uh, the Leeward Islands batting was not positive enough, and they, uh, they allowed themselves to be backed into a corner. And they were not scoring runs. They were not rotating strike. They were not putting uh, pressure on the guy and his bowlers. And they were allowing the bowlers uh, to bowl to them and to... Uh, find their lines and length and uh, uh, truth be said though that the Guyanese bowlers they, they, they have shown a lot more, much more a lot more discipline than, than, than the Leeward Island bowlers uh, so far they have certainly bowled good lines and length and we have not seen too many uh, deliveries offline by the Guyanese bowlers and uh, uh, certainly the uh, in a very good position at this point with eight wickets down. Leibold is the new batter uh, for the Leeward Islands. And uh, uh, it's last one of balls to her. She's back, pushes back into the offside. The over comes to an end. And uh, uh, the Leeward Islands uh, staring defeat in the face. Uh, Tonya Martin on no score yet to score. And... Uh, uh, in fact, Tonya Martin, uh, Hector was the one who ran out. The, the new batter there is Leibold. So, so uh, graphics not updated at this point. It's uh, uh, showing 81 for 7. The score is showing 79 for 8. Uh, so hopefully we could get it right. But we do apologize to our listeners. 
uh, uh, for for those those scores. If we uh, misleading you at any point, but uh, we have to go based on the, the the what we're seeing on the scoreboard. So it's a, it's a bit conflicting at the moment, but. Hopefully they'll get it right and we'll get the right score. What we know, though, is that eight wickets are down for the Leeward Islands and at the moment uh, they seem to be staring uh, uh, defeat in the face. Uh, they, uh, 140, 139, it would suggest to me that they, they <laughs> they're just about halfway there. With practically all the wickets down, they would need another, let's say, 21 plus uh, 39, that's 60 runs. And uh, it seems as though we are going to have a drinks break at the moment. Well, Millington continues from the far end, and uh, there's an appeal, and is she out? Yes, she is. She's bowled all over the place there, uh, is uh, Martin, and the nine wickets are down for the Leeward Islands, and uh, uh, they need another 62 runs to win. The last batter goes out, Parker. But well, this is rather interesting. I, I don't recall... Parker bowling, but she's batting at number 11. And Guyana really in the ascendancy at this point, and it's over by the shouting. So it's 81 now for 9. Scoreboard shows, and we're in over number. We've had some uh, 34 overs completed, so we're in over number 35. And guy in a cock a hoop at this point. It was a lie, but yet to score. So what uh, looked like a very low score for uh, Ghana turning out to be a big one for them. 
And uh, really sailing to victory quite easily here this afternoon here at the St. Paul's Recreation Ground. As Millington bowls to Parker. Parker is playing that, missing outside the off stump. Guyanese team very vocal at this point. And you can't blame them. Uh, they are winning. They're in a very good position. Just one wicket to go. Uh, Millington already picking up a wicket in this over. She comes in now. She's going around the wicket. Flashed up there by Parker. Missed completely. Three goes to Campbell. So the Leeward Islands uh, badly outplayed here by the Guyanese team. Uh, their performance with the, with the ball in the field was not too bad. This one is driven, taken on the full, driven up to mid-off uh, by Parker. No run scored. Millington once more. This time he's pushed uh, gently into the offside. And it goes up to Schultz of field and there's no run. In fact... Draws away looking to force and misses and three goes to the keeper. So looks like just a matter of time unless we have one of those uh, cricket in miracles. Uh, but for now it looks like just a matter of time before this is over. And uh, Latchman will continue. Uh, last one would be in her eighth over, non-stop. And uh, she, she has uh, picked up four for 23. So Latchman is looking for five for here. Has a chance now as she goes into bowl to lie, but tosses up. Lie, but is swinging and swinging nicely up to the mid-wicket. Uh, uh, just for a single though, as it's fielder there on the, the, the boundary. The fielder coming off the boundary, that's uh, Munisa. And uh, just a single as the left hand the Parker comes in to strike. So we see the changes being wrong for the uh, left-handed Parker, the backward point cover, extra cover mid-off. She gets one outside the off stump, does not play a shot, through it goes to the keeper. There's a short backward square, in fact, we see Campbell uh, sending back mid-on onto the boundary. That's uh, we hear on a woman, he's an attempted Cut, missed there by Parker. It goes to the keeper. On the onside, there's a short backward square, square leg, short mid wicket, mid wicket. Uh, back a few yards away from the, a few meters away from the, the boundary, and a long on. Tossed up, bottom edge into the onside for a single. And uh, Parker gets off the mark with that single, so the score with that single uh, moves on to 82. 82 for nine, the Leewards. As Leibard, was that Leibard is back on strike. <laughs> uh, she's. <laughs> uh, Almost jumping into that one. <laughs> one got the impression that she was going for a big hit, but then decided against it. And in the end, decided to defend and keep it out. So the over comes to an end. And uh, we have another 14 over left after this one. 36 overs have be been completed. And uh, the obviously, in fact, 37 overs have been completed, so we have another 13 overs 
outside the off-stump. Dab that, missed completely, and threw to Campbell. But I think those 13 overs are inconsequential at this point. 59 runs needed. This one, she's swinging that in the wicket, missed it. The peel goes up, probably going down leg. Uh, no response there uh, from umpire. Just probably missing leg. Tossed up and uh, played up to mid on. The return goes to the keeper's end. It's not a good one. And uh, in the end, uh, uh, the batter is safely home. And uh, one run to Parker. So Leibert comes in to strike. I, I think this might be the first delivery she's uh, receiving from Millington also. Short third man, backward point, cover, extra cover, mid off. Leibert draws away, looking to pull into the onside rather than gain a looking shot. Uh, seems to have lost shape totally. And she bottom edged it into the onside and uh, no one was scored. So she's tossed up and uh, the appeal goes up for a catch and she's out. So it's all over. It was tossed up, she was swinging. She stands there. Certainly there was some movement away and that seemed to have taken the bat and uh, uh, she was sent on away, so uh, Guyana winning this one, winning by some 58 runs. And uh, Guyana, uh, I'm pretty certain, will be happy with this victory and uh, picking up full points in, in, this, in this match. No bonus points for them, but nevertheless, they, they would be very happy with the victory. And of course, not conceding any bonus points also. So, there you have it, there you have it, uh, the first match coming to an end in this uh, West Indies, uh, the CG, um, when Super 50 tournament being held here in St. Kitts, and Guyana coming up against the uh, Leeward Islands, Guyana, after being inserted today, uh, uh, winning this one and uh, winning in fine style with some, uh, just over some 12 overs to spare.